Hello and welcome into another Rocket League matchup here in the AEL High School. My name is Whoopshoot. Join alongside of me for the action today is my good friend Gex. Gex, how are you doing? I miss you around these parts, man. Long time no see. Yeah, I know. It's been like a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> a week I'm just saying, like, long, I'm, getting, I'm getting sick of you, Whoops. You're invading over here. I'm sorry. Where's I'm leaving. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> no, it's been great working alongside you. And, uh, of course, with the kids, the high school series is really going off right now. I've been having a lot of fun with this, and I'm sure it'll continue today. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of good matchups today. Uh, we had a lot of banger matchups last week as well, but we'll get to that a little bit later. We want to talk about the tournament that you guys are seeing right here on your guys' screen. Of course, we are in the divisional part portion of this matchup right now, and you know we're going to be sitting here for about another week here, Gex. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one week, though, goes by pretty fast. Uh, this is actually the final day of yeah. that part of the uh, tournament. So we're going to be going through to the uh, playoffs. That uh, Divisional League play just about done here, and uh, it should be pretty interesting seeing how the teams progress. In fact, we've already got a couple of teams across the divisions that have uh, already made their push to be secured before today. Indeed, indeed we do. We have a couple of teams here. Going to update you guys on the standings uh, just to get you guys up to speed with this last week that we have here presented in front of you. Of course, we know and love this Toner squad. They're currently sitting in that first place spot in Division 1. Kendron, a close, close second. Linwood, a little bit further behind them in that third place spot as well. Ripley Raptors Blue in that fourth place spot. Uh, currently holding that four and four record, and then, of course we have SPCC Light and Tangy one and seven, and the MRC Saints getting their first win last week, sitting at one and seven as well. Yeah, nice to see them getting involved as well. You, you really could see potential out of every team, so it would be a shame to see MRC Saints go home without that victory. And uh, I'm sure they've had fun as a result playing out through the series at this point. Of course, Toners having already secured their spot means that they know they're going to be playing more as well. Exactly. But I mean, that weight is kind of lifted off their shoulders, you know, so mm, they have yeah. to at least breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief and just kind of relish in the first place standings, mm. especially since, you know, uh, you know, gave them a run for their money. Only one game game differential between the two teams. So that's how close it was here in the regular season so far. But we're not done yet with the action. But before we get into today's schedule, we want to talk about real quick our lovely, lovely sponsors. We know we love mm. talking about them. Gex, we can't get enough of them as well. We'd like to thank you. Starting off with, of course, Acer Australia, the presenting partner of the high school series who provide PC technology solutions for all high school needs or for all schooling needs. I shouldn't just say high school. If you go to college, university, whatever you go to, please look into Acer uh, for your guys' uh, classroom needs and at home as well. Or if you guys want yourself a good gaming rig, well, look at Predator Gaming, the gaming PC partner who provide high-end gaming-focused PC solutions in both laptop and desktop formats, and of course, powered by Intel. And Gex, as always, we have to pair that with a banger monitor, and that mm. monitor is AOC, the gaming monitor partner who provide first or best-in-class monitor solutions for all gaming and other needs. And, of course, if you're going to be gaming all day, you need that uh, that gaming fuel. Let's go with Indomie, the uh, noodle partner. Made with high-quality flour and selected ingredients and spices, a plate of Indomie Mi Goreng will certainly brighten up your day. Try any of the flavors available today from your local grocer or at indomie.com.au. That means you, whoops, you can't go and get at your grocery, I don't think. Not uh, at all. Um, so, yeah, get online, indomie.com.au. And, of course, we are backing a very special charity here as well. Game on Cancer is the charity of choice for the AEL who fund much needed cancer research projects. With the AEL donating a portion of all student participation fees to this life-saving cause. If you would like to donate as well, uh, please head to the AEL's Tiltify campaign page. And of course, every dollar there helps uh, when we've got such a uh, big fan base out there for these schools and everything. A dollar here and there adds up in the long run to a large, large amount of help. It really does. Every single dollar, this matters. If you have a dollar to spare, please consider donating. Click on that link, or I'm sorry, scan the QR code and follow the link yeah. as well, I was trying to say, and please do what you can to help out for a very, very good cause. Uh, so hopping into today's schedule, we have a good docket on our hand as well, Gex. I mean, we have some good matchups. 
I, I, like I said before, I had not really too much uh, kind of controversy on the line here as far as like who's going to do what because it's pretty much all set in stone at this point in time. But at the same time, we still have some really, really good matches on our hands. This first matchup, of course, is going to be um, this Linwood squad versus MRC Saints. Match number two on the docket, Kendron versus MRC Saints. So back to back MRC Saints. And then we switch it up and go back to back, back SPCC as well. It's going to be SPCC versus Kendron and then SPCC versus the Ripley Raptors. This is going to be tough for MRC. I know we said that there was plenty of potential out of this squad, but Linwood in particular have been absolutely on top of things. I think Kedron is not far behind either. They're, they're actually pretty neck and neck between them. Yeah. The top three teams in this league are a threat to everybody, and MRC Saints are going to have to really step up their game if they're going to make a threat on that. SPC, of course, also going to be uh, facing down some tough opponents ripley raptors though they have had a bit of a mishmash of uh of games throughout the season so far so still looking for the consistency step up out of that of course a lot of players even in this division we saw uh, the clip of fergo earlier uh invor there i think as well might even be there is uh they're all playing over in the draft league at the moment so there's a lot of practice going on for these guys heaps of the teams are scrimming pretty constantly uh so heaps and heaps of development of these players going on the the skill level is going through the roof right now like we talked about beforehand this is the future of you know australia this is uh potentially mm. some of these players names write them down guarantee you're gonna start to see their names pop up in the future as they start to qualify for rlcs you know maybe make it to some of those day three runs and you know, you're gonna be like, hey, I remember seeing these guys in the AEL League and, uh, you know, just how far they have come. It's gonna be awesome to see that ride. But first, we have to get there. It's a, it's a long journey ahead of that. Me and you both know that for sure. Um, but at the same time, I I'm excited. Like, like you said, the Raptors are just one of those teams who I'm excited to see, always circle it. But, you know, like you said, they have a lot of work mm. to do. But this first matchup on our hands, we're gonna have Linwood, Linwood versus the MRC Saints with the starting roster of Matthew, Xavier, and DJ over on the Linwood side of the field. And on the uh, Saints side of the field, we have uh, Ghosty, Kryptos, and Super Nye, which uh, it, it's good to see, you know, the Saints here against a very, very mm. tough Linwood squad. It's, it's going to be difficult for them to push past, in my personal opinion. Uh, Linwood, like you said, just one of those teams who have just been so dominant. And on top of that, they work together so well as a team. Yeah, and uh, speaking of teams that are representing that draft league as well, both Matthew and Xavier in teams there as well. Matthew actually part of my own squad uh, picked up there, so I'm going to be keeping an eye on him. You know, he's got to he's got to really uh, make his money's worth here in the in the uh, AEL High School league as well. So uh, Matthew has been really really pushing himself. I've gotten a lot of messages from him even outside of uh, my pickup in the draft league. So I know that that's there's there's a big focus on getting professional from a lot of the players here in the high school league and I don't think that that's to be taken away from MRC either because uh, I think Crypto in particular has um, made a little bit of an appearance here and there. So Super Nye, I know the name well and truly. Uh, there's definitely things to look at for MRC, but this is going to be a tough challenge. There's no doubt about that. I mean, it, it definitely is going to be a, a tough ask out of the Saints, you know, currently sitting on the bottom of the roster, bottom, bottom of the standings. Um, but at the same time, anybody's beatable in Rocket League. I, I love that aspect of the game. It's just going to be a really, like you said, a tough ask for um, for us to kind of uh, ask out of the Saints. You know, Crypto, like you said, is just one of those people to watch if he pops off. He definitely could take a couple of games away from, um, you know, Linwood by himself. But at the same time, you, you have to rely on Ghosty and Super Knight, those other two players, too, to kind of do their jobs and their responsibilities, too. Mm -hmm. um, be, be, if they have any chance whatsoever at coming in here and trying to go up against Linwood. But I think they might have an advantage, something we really haven't talked about just yet, Gex. Um, I think Linwood might be down a player, so I think yeah, we might both see... Are, a, actually, I, I believe there's a, there's a 2v2 going on right now. It's going to be Matthew and Xavier. I, I see that, actually. And yeah. uh, they're going up against Ghosty and Crypto. So this should be a very, very big change uh, to what we expect out of this matchup. And yeah, I think uh, Matthew and Xavier have a lot of chemistry there. And like I said, Matthew's coming in with a, with a very professional attitude towards the game and everything. So he's going to really try and show his uh, medal right now. I think this is going to be an attempt at a bit of a statement match. 
Yeah. I mean, if it's two people that we're going to have to rely on that would get the W in a 2v2 situation, it probably would be Matthew and Xavier. Not taking anything away from Sweat or, uh, you know, from Linwood but, uh, by any means because he balls out as well. But at the same time, mm. like I said beforehand, just yeah. a really, really good duo right here for Linwood. So here we go. A 2v2, a little uh, different than what we're used to here on the stream, Gex. But at the same time, we start off with a close shot by Matthew. I think, actually, uh, if you were going to pick players from each team to do this, it's probably the ones I would have chosen as well. So the 2v2 does go on. We do see Super Noi actually joining into the match, so he might get involved yeah. at some point here. But probably we have game. been informed that it is going to be a 2v2 series. So. Exactly. Ghosty and Crypto, good duel, like you said, as well. But I don't know. We're going to have to see. 2v2 is just so different than 3v3. Oh, Look my at the goodness. Touch from heaven there it is the first goal going to be in favor of Linwood. not just the first goal this game or this series but of the entire stream today and it's going in in that fashion we are starting off on a peak xavier showing up such a good shot was not expecting that touch early on a pinch of cucks here trying to go for the side wall as well that one woke me up a little bit kex i'll tell you that much xavier starting things off with some fireworks but I like what I'm seeing from Crypto as well. He, he he had the ball, he had possession, just didn't really have enough boost. So at the same time, didn't let that first goal discourage him by any means. Great pass down to Matthew, but Ghosty has the speed there to shut down Linwood if he can be on it. But that's the goal coming through. Another bit of a passing play. We'll say it's secured by Xavier, shall we? <laughs> yeah, secured's always the best word. It's, it's never stolen. It's always secured, no, you know. Especially he, not Messi. Exactly. He wanted the highlight reel. He knew this is going to be a 2v2. He knew the next game is probably going to be a 2v3. So he's like, hey, I want to make my mark known. Uh, so I want to get the second goal, you know. <laughs> now we're, yeah, there is confirmation. We'll be going ahead as a 2v3 now that Supernoy is available. That should be a bit of a better test for Linwood, who are right now performing well. There had to be a save on the line, though. And Matthew gets credit. I think both players were there available for that save. There's the pass in. Xavier's gone up to the backboard, though. A bit of a misplay. And MRC Saints get out unharmed. Might even get one away, but it looks like it's off target. The post what pinch will take it further as well. Yeah, that one was almost a gimme. It could have lift up because there's that awkward like cylinder mm. shape towards the tail end of that, that lower 90 of the net. So it could have lift up and potentially went in, but heck of a save right there from Matthew. And we'll go back to that air dribble play that Xavier had as well as he saves this one off the backboard. Might have a follow-up touch from somebody from the Saints. Didn't really get as much contact as they needed to on that ball, but he almost had the dunk on that one individual drive that he had. He almost read it perfectly, but the defense of the Saints just stood so tall and kept it out. Dunk from Xavier there, Matthew. Coming on, right into control. Good reset there, doesn't quite get it back. And Crypto, way upfield now. Good chase here from MRC Saints. They can't just let the pressure drop though. Good early challenges on Xavier and Matthew are gonna be important, but that one has not gone well. Crypto back with defense. And Crypto has a chance oh. now to maybe get himself a goal. Oh. Ghosty gonna be denied by Xavier. What a save on the back end. This one's going to be a good goal or a good potential goal right here for Matthew. Who has an air trouble checking it from the far post. Oh, Flip reset. Oh, There's no. the pitch with the side post as well. There's the highlight play for Matthew. Matthew, the control over the car on this. The reset. Pogo's off the ground to a post pinch to finish that. Unbelievable stuff. That is incredible shot. Yeah, I think that's the first Pogo I think I've ever casted. And I missed the. I missed it. It's uh, unfortunate, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking oh, of crypto. unfortunate, yeah, I was going to say Crypto is the score on the back end here, making it a little bit more doable at the 2 minute and 20 second mark. So good goal kickoff as well, Gex. We're going to start off uh, how we did a couple weeks ago with a couple of kickoff goes or, or what? Yeah, I think so. Crypto is also wrapping one of the uh, the squads from ODL there, the uh, MKAU uh, gang. Might have picked up Crypto there, so Ghosty now trying to follow this up. It's interesting though that it, over there they do have different divisional ranks as well, uh, and I think these players are separated by a full rank, so seeing Crypto step up and uh, and really give a test to the uh, higher rank opponents here, it's going to be very, very nice for him, representing well. I think it was Matthew with a breakaway. Good shot fired towards net. That one's going to be kept out by Crypto, though. Xavier, soft touch on the back end. It's going to be easily saved, though, from Crypto as well. I think Matthew and Crypto, a little bit of shambles right there, getting tangled up because of that demolition that happened onto Matthew. Oh, Crypto! No. 
Gonna pick up his second goal, though. An unexpected shot, unexpected hit off the back yeah. wall to cut the defense off guard. You gotta say, great stuff from Crypto. That was enough of a threat to force Matthew into a bad position. But Matthew, the own goal coming out. Not what you wanna see out of Linwood, who should be dominant here, only up by a single goal. And this is about to turn into a 3v2 against them. Yeah, I'm interested to see how the 2v3 is going to work out in this mm. next game. When Super Nye is oh. going to come out onto the pitch, is it going to be more bothersome? Is it going to be uncomfortable for the Saints? Uh, only time's going to tell with that one. But as I'm talking about that, Matthew's going to cross the finish line with another goal, making it 42. Yeah, I mean, uh, like we said, I think Linwood would have wanted a bit of a statement match out here. But if even 4-2, a to two-goal differential here is recoverable in the gap between games. It's, uh, we see it happen pretty frequently that a team warms up in game two and Linwood is probably hoping it's them even though they're on top right now but MRC Saints they've got a lot to gain bringing in their third player as well almost 60 seconds to go here in game number one Linwood in a little bit more control only done by two goals though are the Saints who are marching down the field right now trying to get something going but it's gonna be taken away by Matthew Matthews still has possession, still just stalling some time out as well. Runs out of boost. Gonna give that one over to Ghosty towards the midfield line. Good 50 50. That one's popped up towards mid. Matthew gonna keep that one out of Crypto's hand. Despite the goal difference here, there's actually only two shots difference between these teams. Another one added on, though, will separate them a little further here, especially in goals as the shots continue to rain down. Somebody get MRC Saints an umbrella. Yeah, it's a good shot right there. Just so sometimes it's all you need is just a little tap towards the net. Find its way in. Keep the pressure right back onto the Saints. And we were talking about how difficult it was going to be in a 3v3 situation. We never thought it was going to be this, this 2v2 situation. But it's basically been the Linwood show here in game number one. Courtesy of Matthew and Xavier. Three goals for Matthew. Has himself a hat trick. Two goals for Xavier. Had himself a highlight reel finish as well. Crypto with a mm. flick. Not going to find its mark. Only 20 seconds left. Looks like Linwood might hang on to this lead, Gex. Crypto trying to chase this into his own defense for control here, but it's Matthew. It's going to get away from him. Here we go. Ghosty on it. Good control. Ghosty gets the finishing touch. This is awesome stuff out of MRC Saints. Talk about the potential they've got. Look at the control from Ghosty. Actually an exceptional ground up. Yeah. Good goal from Ghosty. Love to see the aggression towards the tail end of the game. Not giving up just yet. I know I counted them out, but at the same time, you'd love to see it. I mm. to the bitter end, but Linwood still pulls away in this matchup and wins game number one in a 5-2 to two fashion. And if this was going to stay a 2v2, I'd be hard up to find the difference maker for MRC Saints here. Linwood were kind of freestyling on that as well, really trying to get out some big goals there to, to pad out their clip reel. But with the 3v2 coming in now, MRC Saints, they've got, they, we already saw the potential out of just the two-man squad. I think there is some real potential, not just to display great stuff here, but actually for a win if they continue to play like this with their third. I mean, it's going to be a, one of two things is going to happen. Either the MRC Saints are going to just come out here and dominate because they have the numbers and they're going to catch them with, you know, off guard here. Or it's going to be, you know, Super Nye going to be getting in the way. I, I say Super Nye because he just wasn't the person that was here. Yeah. But someone is going to be, there's going to be that miscommunication on the field, basically, for the Saints. And uh, it's going to lead to their demise, essentially, where Linwood's going to take full on advantage. But the good news is, if you're a Linwood fan, you already have one game under your belt. Now, mm. if you, you know, even lose this one, the series is tied, you can come back and win the next one, you know, maybe play a little bit different of a play style, and then win that next game and force that match point. And I, I really feel like they're going to have to do that because that match point is going to be detrimental to the mental of the Saints team. If, if they get forced onto match point, I really feel like there's going to be a lot more mistakes and the Linwood could probably pull off the sweep. Does look like Linwood is looking to bring in their third, possibly after this game as well. So fingers crossed for them here. But we're yet to see if they need it because MRC Saints, they're just on field with their third for the first time now. Matthew underneath, good control. It's going to go high. He gets bumped low. Xavier's there, but has to turn away. What I'm looking at here is how Supernoi fits into the squad because coming in mid-series, that is so tough 
it, to adjust to the pace that, and warmth that everybody else on field already has when you're coming in cold can be really, really terrifying. And we just seen a little bit of a hiccup right there from the Saints. You saw Crypto and Super Knight both getting tangled up with one another, mm. going for the same point of attack. Um, and that's uh, that's what we were talking about. You know, this third person could add to the oh, chemistry Matthew. or it could mix it up. You see a fired shot right there from Matthew. The follow-up touch as well from Xavier. Going to be denied. Matthew with another follow. Going to keep it out. Crypto with a, like at least two or three back-to-back -back saves on the goal line. Here comes again Xavier to hold the ball. Can he get it past Super Nye, who is trying to get into this play? Did take a good position on wall there. Against any other team, they probably would have had a good read, but they are just read out themselves. The plans come to nothing when Linwood gets on top of this, but they haven't been able to score yet. Xavier's gonna change it right now. 336 on the board as the first one goes in. And I like what Linwood did with this possession as well. They took their time. They were trying to bait the defense out. They were, you know, making them respect a lot of their touches as well, sucking them off that goal line, making them challenge outside the box. And basically, that's exactly what had led to that goal was just constant pressure from Linwood. And the first goal is conceded by the Saints. So they have to answer back. Like I said beforehand, it's going to be interesting to see how things are going to happen as oh. Superdai fires a shot and ties this one right back up. Super Nye gets onto field and is the first one to make a point difference here against MRC Saints. They have just evened things up and that is going to be so necessary as Sweat from Linwood has just entered the match. He will have to wait to the next game, but this is going to be a 3v3. A little bit better of a chance now for Linwood to pull away and run away in this series. If you're the Saints, you're not happy to see Sweat join because he is definitely a difference maker here for this for Linwood. My apologies. Almost three minutes remaining now. Ghosty at midfield. That was going to be taken away like, temporarily by Xavier. Crypto does gather that one right back up. Here comes Matthew now. Oh, the Matthew. air dribble has plenty of boost. Maybe he can get the flip reset. Oh! He's just going to dribble this one in. Never mind. Matthew going to score another goal for Linwood. And those are hard. Such a long shot. Carries it straight through and deep into the nets that is such a great goal from linwood if they're gonna win this and look good about it a 2v3 is definitely the way to do it linwood looking on fire courtesy of matthew the player you told us to watch oh, Gex, xavier, another shot no. a whip the save is missed by xavier unfortunate right there but we have ourselves a tie ball game this is looking interesting for Linwood. I don't like the fact that they've got their third ready for the next one for MRC Saints, but if Saints are going to get the confidence they need to take them on, they have to do it here and now. An even match isn't good enough. Crypto might be able to change it off the backboard. Super nice for the second shot. No power on it. Xavier bangs one downfield. Ghosty has to make a touch on this, and it does get away, but Xavier thought the touch was there. It's going yeah. to come away and go right across the front of that. We call those ones calculated fakes, okay, Gex? That's what those yes, are called, yeah, you know? Yes, absolutely. As, as, as long as you're in the vicinity of the ball, they think you're going to hit it, then, hey, guess what? It works out, and this one doesn't work out for Matthew. I thought it was going to roll in, but Crypto knew otherwise. He had the better angle than me and you. Xavier fires a shot. Super not going to keep that one out. This is the pressure that we were talking about from Linwood that, they, that, that led to that first goal. Can they have another one here and regain the sleep? Xavier gets it down. Body's in the way. Crypto now to the midfield. They do lose control here, and Crypto is going to be stuck underneath as well. Awkward positioning there. Ghosty does take the danger away from forcing out the 2v2 situation again. Yeah, I like the patience though. Saints aren't trying to really push the envelope. Same thing for Linwood. They know that they're at a disadvantage here, so they're just trying to slow play a lot of the, uh, have a mistake come out from the Saints. There was a mistake there as well. Crypto just trying to play keep away at that point in time. Matthew, Xavier, both of them not trying to push too far. They want that, that touch from the Saints to pretty much give them the lead here. Nothing really presented. So smart play so far from the Saints as well. Matthew, the control every time he gets an air is brilliant, but... 
Jackson. The opportunity to freestyle to use the mech will be shut down by plenty of players. Just not happening uh, right now. I the challengers need sorry. to get up earlier, especially while it's a 3v2. The situation is available to be challenging early. Oh my goodness, Xavier, what a play! Matthew is there to support. Xavier, I thought he had it on his own for a moment. Yeah, I mean, that was such a good goal from Xavier. I mean, initially, because he had the recognition there on the back post. He kept the pressure on. I mm. thought it was going in as well, but that top crossbar working out for the Saints. Matthew, right place, right time. He does score uh, the goal, and I, I would say secure it. That's stolen away from Xavier, yeah, but no, he does secure that one. This time, yeah. yeah, actually, <laughs> actually secured that one. Matthew, good control, but not enough boost to go for the play we at this point know who he wants to go for here but working the defense here both these players Xavier coming into his own right as well I said keep an eye on Matthew but Xavier is definitely pulling his weight might even be just on par here final 15 seconds game number two Linwood up three to two and they're winning one to zero in the series as well last ditch effort here from the Saints that was gonna be fired towards the net of the blue half Matthew gonna keep that one at bay here comes Crypto, has boost, can't get the read oh. off the sidewall. This ball's still up, super nice, somebody go for it. Nobody goes for it, there's the kill, courtesy of Xavier. This one's gonna be all she wrote, three to two in favor of Linwood. Yeah, really a good push at the end there, and I'll see Saints diving deep into their opponent's defense, but just couldn't get it home in the end, and uh, that does mean that in those dying seconds, the chance goes away. MLC Saints go down 3-2. to two. A good push here, but Matthew and Xavier, this duo is just lethal. Yeah, I mean, like I said beforehand, this is a good duo to have. If you only have two players for Linwood, this is the, the best option, in my personal opinion. Like you said beforehand, Matthew's just that player to watch here on Linwood. On top of that, Xavier is, has been known to just pop off and get himself yeah. some individual goals anyway when it's a 3v3 format. So to see them have a little bit more space, a lot more separation in the 2v2 style um, is, is probably more beneficial to Linwood with their with, with, the, with how their play style is. Now mm. Sweat is here. It's going to go back to that traditional 3v3. Could this be the demise that we've been looking for for Linwood? Or is it just going to add on to, you know, pretty much this what's been happening with them today, which has oh. been a lot of Rocket League, a lot of shots as well. And I see Saints, now that it's gone to that 3v3, was super crucial that they score that first goal. It does get away from them. And it might be a free one. Oh, no. A lot of mistakes on defense here. The ball just gets left free. Xavier with the double touch wasn't even shooting on net. Sweat misses, and it just makes its way in. Yeah, I'm not too sure what happened to uh, Crypto on that play either. He was going towards that far post. The ball just bounces right in front of him. He just says, I'm going to put him in park right here on the goal line. Mm -hmm. As we see another shot being fired over from Xavier. Ghosty going to keep that one at bay, though. Matthew now, follow-up touch. Lots of pressure being generated from Linwood early on in this match number three. Once again, worth mentioning that it can uh, actually throw a team off when you bring on that third cold as well. So Sweat has to do his best to get up to speed very, very quickly. You don't want that just kind of edging into net there. It is likely to happen again if awkwardness just continues and it might have just happened once more. Xavier gives it a helping hand. Yeah, Matthew, great advancement. Threatening with that flip reset as well. Xavier with the follow-up. Just kept, keep uh, catching that defense off guard right there from the Saints. You saw Super Knight trying to save that one as well. And then, uh, of course, Ghosty on the goal line just not get the proper read. So up 2-0 to zero now is Linwood. Not even a minute off the clock, Ikex. Crypto! It's a mistouch. Matthew's there just collecting that one. And, oh, MRC Saints, they're just falling apart at the moment. The pressure is on. Crypto just gets a poor touch on it. He was there. The challenge was good. The decision was right. But a mechanical error costs them another one. Yeah, unfortunate mistake right there. But it's going to play dividends in favor of Linwood. Xavier right back to work, though. Not going to, you know, pull up, the, pu push the gas pedal. Or, I'm sorry, the brake just yet. He's going to keep mm -hmm. his foot on the gas pedal. You knew where I was going with that one, Gax. Great I'm sorry. Defense. I was just uh, trying oh, to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, plus, we don't call it that in Australia. So everybody's confused. Oh, what do you, anyway, what do you, what do you call it? Accelerator? Accelerator? <laughs> Aluminium? Okay. Is, is, is that what you're going to tell me next? Aluminium. 
<laughs> Aluminum, okay? <laughs> oh, man. For those of you who don't know, I'm from America, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you can't tell. So, anyway. one of the most interesting differences there I have heard of is we call... Uh, there's a material we call Hessian. For you guys, it's burlap. Burlap sack, dude. Yeah, that's a Hessian <laughs> sack. <laughs> Never in my life have I ever heard of Hessian, okay? <laughs> you win this Hessian. round. Hessian. I, I, Hessian, if you want to get really fancy. Hess Hessian. It doesn't help me. H-E-S-S-I-A-N. -S -S Hessian. Hessian. Well, we had Crypto that fired off uh, shots from about midfield. He has a couple of shots so far. Nothing really crossed in the finish line for him or the Saints. Not too much pressure being generated by them either. I really feel like oh, it's been Linwood's ball goodness. game, especially that one ringing off the backboard. Another shot that's going to be an open net. Sweat's going to put that one away easily. Speaking of the double S's here, Xavier and Sweaty both uh, meeting up for the shot. I would definitely class these two both as S. S plus if I had to rank them. I just want to let you know. It's not mm -hmm. your fault. Tins did the same thing last week. It's sweat. It's sweat, YouTube. Sweat, sweat. So you I know. know. I was trying to avoid it, too. I, I, I've been on myself about that. I knew it's it was okay. going to come out. Oh, oh, my goodness. Speaking of it, Matthew brings something out, and it is a massive backboard shot. Look at the speed. He gets back to this as well. Yeah, Xavier had one game one. Matthew has one that fires back here in game number three. Linwood has just been on fire as we approach the halfway point in this matchup and I don't even think they're letting up at all. They just they're just going to town at this point in time. They 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 just they don't want to get out of here. They want to keep adding more to their to their stock. Super nine does send it high. A demo there on crypto. We'll keep Linwood safe for now, but there's big pushes out of the MRC Saints. I feel like they are being overwhelmed a bit on a mental front right now. Look at this. It's stuck in the Linwood half and nobody there pushing that pressure on. Yeah, I don't know why, because at this point in time, it's five to zero. You can't lose yeah. by much more. I mean, yeah, of course you can, but I'm saying like, at what cost? Why? Just push up, be aggressive, change your play style up just a tad bit. Maybe even ball chase if you really wanted to, because why not? What are you going to have to lose at this point in time? Sweat. On it, Ghosty, there it is. There's one there for MRC Saints. It did take a little bit of an error from Linwood, but finally, some upfield aggression. Ghosty just pushing onto this. Makes it awkward for Sweat. Xavier and Matthew make contact in front of goal, and it just slips by on the left-hand side. That's exactly what I was talking about. That's gonna, you know, that's sometimes what happens. You need a little bit of a mistake from the defense. You might as well push up and like we talked about beforehand, be aggressive at that point in time. Good pass from Xavier over to Matthew on the left hand side, right hand side, my apologies. But at the same time, to no avail. Xavier fires a shot back towards Matthew, keeping him awake back there towards the tail end of the, the play. Saints are gonna try, oh I was gonna goodness. say, try to get possession here. Just a miscue at midfield is gonna send that one in, courtesy of Sweat. Yeah, I mean, MRC Saints just learned the lesson the hard way that this ball can get slippery, but here it comes again. Back the other way, MRC Saints haven't learned their lesson, apparently, as it does slip by. And another one collected. They are one away from taking us to South America. Maybe not. I was going to say a super nice. Did have a shot. I mean, the follow-up is going to be a little bit too far wide to the right-hand side as well. Matthew, Xavier, still going to work. Super nine, a little bit of boost midfield. Gonna get a soft touch towards the net. Has to be respected by the defense of Linwood. Only 45 seconds left here in game number three. Only one goal so far for the Saints. Oh, I was gonna say so much for the pressure. It really hasn't been on. That one saved away though, just in the nick of time. Yeah, really just in the nick of time. I thought we had another one, and we do. Matthew, he just said, wait a second here. Wait a second. I, I'm having some issues boarding my plane, but let's go. We're straight on to Brazil. Obviously, they were having some issues getting the players into the lobby as well. You know what I mean? But everybody's arrived here in Brazil. 7-1 to one score line, 30 seconds left. We're going to see... I was going to say how long we're going to be here is, as far as this game goes. We've seen a heck of a lot of goals from Linwood. Lots of productivity from them. Almost oh. about 15-ish shots, I think it is, if I do some quick maths. 15 seconds remaining, though. 
Onto the orange half we go. A little bit of a misread right there from Super 9. Ghosty going to bring that Sweat. one up towards midfield oh. as well. Sweat couldn't keep him at bay. This is another shot fire Can towards they? Xavier. Oh. <laughs> keeps it out. I thought he was going to own goal that. But instead keeps it off the backboard. Definitely hoping for the MRC Saints that that would be the case. But uh, that's going to be the game. Linwood, they take that final one in style, 7-2-1. Yeah, unfortunate right there for the Saints. Like we said, they missed a huge opportunity taking advantage of the 2v2 situation. They also missed a huge opportunity taking advantage of the 2v3 situation as well. So it was just unfortunate to see them fall the way that they did, especially falling in a 7-2 fashion towards the tail end of this matchup as well, because I really feel like, you know, the Saints could have uh, they could have done some damage. You know, Ghosty and Crypto were playing really, really well together. Super Knight came in and, you know, he showed, showed strong. He scored the first goal in that game number two, mm -hmm. but at the same time, Linwood just too powerful. Matthew and Xavier stepping up big time. Really, really great stuff from Linwood, but uh, I love that the MRC Saints, they can get beaten and uh, they can take it like champs. Uh, they, they were so complimentary after the match. There's a Matthews on the uh, Rocket League Roids. <laughs> He's uh, definitely <laughs> buffing up right now. He's got the uh, the muscles bulging, the, the Rocket League muscles. It's uh, coming through, veins popping, but uh, we'll have to see more He's, he's, from definitely, he's definitely in the gym for yeah, sure. Exactly. I mean, Matthew yeah, yeah. was popping off in that match up and he had himself a couple <laughs> highlights for sure but we haven't saints seen the last of the saints mm. at all gex we're gonna have to see them up next in our next matchup versus kendron the number two team here in the ael we'll be right back <laughs> i was like or will we <laughs> we're just gonna stay here awkwardly <laughs> and
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thank you very much for sticking with us through that break. This is the AEL High School Divisional Play, and this is week number five. My name is Whoops. You join alongside of me for the action today is my good friend Gex, who is just looking lovely today. Gex, I, I, the, the outfit and the chef's kiss, You're looking great. Yeah, yeah. Just you don't have to. You don't have to do that. Gex, stop, please. You don't have to do that, please. <laughs> yes, I do. I gotta fix myself up now. You're making me nervous. Oh, speaking of people who weren't nervous, though, we started off today very strong. That last matchup was huge by Linwood. Uh, really, really some 
excellent plays coming up, particularly from Matthew. Everybody uh, giving him compliments after the game, even from the opposing side. But speaking of that opposing side, MRC Saints, they've got to go through and play again now. Yeah, I mean, and they have a tough ask as well because they're facing off against the, the second best team here in Division 1, mm. which is Ted Drawn. <laughs> Kedron versus Kedron, yes. Ted Kedron versus the Saints. <laughs> yeah, starting roster of course over on the Kedron side of the field is Trobi, Deb V, and Levi. Um, heck of a team here, except everybody except for Trobi, obviously. Probably one of the worst players here on this oh, yeah, team. Oh, terrible. Just Absolutely. 100% the, the, the worst, probably, player I, on this literally, roster. Literally, as long as, as, long as uh, MLC Saints can avoid demoing the only thing he's capable of uh, they're, they're <laughs> yeah, absolutely fine yeah easy he may have, whoops may have a grudge right now the the uh the test matches went poorly <laughs> listen i joined into the, the test match one time and troby non-stop demos me i told him if he demos me one more time i am dropping his stock value i have that power okay so now they go against the casters <laughs> <laughs> we can is, make is... you look bad. We're going to focus yeah, on every mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to just pick you apart at this point in time. And we're going to go ahead and make you look like a fool. And your stock value is just going to plummet, okay? Yeah. No Absolutely. school's gonna want. No, I'm just playing. Just a no demonstration just... <laughs> of the god powers of casters. That's that's what you're going for here. Exactly. Yeah, got a big have brain, the but he's got a bigger head. <laughs> it's gonna go right to our heads. No, I mean obviously this is gonna be a good matchup between these two teams, but I fully expect Kedron <laughs> to run away. They were making fun yes. of the way I was saying. Yeah, I, they, I, I they guess the whole entire they, season. They thought, for some reason, they thought you were putting another N on it. I think I do sometimes. Do I have no. I, I have noticed dyslexia. It. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it's okay. It is maybe. what it is. But regardless, it's gonna be a good matchup: the Saints versus Kedron because uh, Kedron is currently, like I said, in second place. So I fully expect them to kind of run away with this matchup. To be honest with you, Gex, um, mm. the Saints—they're—they're they're a solid team, but they just have to work together. And what we just saw against them against Linwood, it just did not work out for them. So I, I fully expect Kedron to run away with this one. Mm. I'm going to have to switch uh, the E to an A just to match you. But people won't be able to mistake us. Cadron. Yeah, that's the, the American I mean, how accent. Do you say, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say, like, is Ped Pedron? Cadron? Yeah. Cadron. 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 <laughs> now we're getting really, <laughs> we really doing? weirdly it's British. Getting, it's getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> Trovi already pushing up and making demos. Like we said, they're going to have to avoid him. Ghosty getting demolished online. Yeah, it's a good showing so far, like I said, though, but the Saints, they started off, uh, you know, keeping oh Kedron goodness. State the squad at bay, <laughs> and now a couple of shots coming through, firing at will was Levi. Ghosty keeps that one away, though. Another shot coming through. Oh. That's an open net off the post, though. And look who it is, Gax. It's Troby. <laughs> it is Troby again here. Uh, look, I think the prediction here is for Kedron once again. Uh, MLC Saints, they are sitting on bottom of leaderboard right now and there is reason for that but they also like we said last series have shown big potential so if they can rise to it here i think they have more of a chance this time around to be honest with you but troby he's gonna try and make me look wrong about that oh, this terrible terrible player coming through with the first goal just completely completely <laughs> carried by death there I don't know what you're talking about. That was a beautiful goal by Troby Gex. Oh, okay, you yeah, you're going to throw me on the bus like him. that. Okay, I see. No, I see. I see. <laughs> oh, man. No, start off with the 1-0 lead, though, is uh, Kedron. <laughs> uh, over the Saints yeah, so far. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, oh, another oh. shot. Dev V fires the second goal. And it just kind of figures that this is a better goal when, when uh, uh, Troby isn't involved, right? Much yeah, better passing 100%. play, much better finish. Easy stuff between Levi and Dev. I mean, at this point in time, it could just, could just be a 2v3. Uh, <laughs> you know, just Dev and... You know, well, it was last Levi. time, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Levi just come out here onto the pitch. You know, Troby just doesn't exist to me. Uh, he's pretty much like J John Cena. <laughs> dead to, I can't dead see to him. whoops. You are dead to whoops. <laughs> Oh my goodness, how long can we keep this bit up is my question. <laughs> Before we <laughs> get in minutes. trouble, I don't know. I don't it might know. already be happening. Yeah, I'm gonna check, double production. check chat. Yeah. I think I'm fired, guys. See you guys later. It's been a good run. I, I came in with Gax, now we're leaving with Gax as the, well. The only reason you get fired is if uh, Kedron somehow actually lose this. Oh my goodness. Please don't. Three minutes <laughs> remaining here in game number one. Two to zero. 
Yeah, Ghosty. when we start looking serious, that's the problem. <laughs> Ghosty keeps the defense at bay. Now he's at midfield. Oh. That one's going to be taken away by Levi, though. Oh. Levi, maybe an easy double touch. Nope, Jeff V going to mm. fire that one back. That should be the third goal, and it is. Yeah, fantastic work again by Kedron here. Just really solid rotations. Death coming in, chasing up that midfield. Just there when the ball drops free, takes the free goal. Pretty easy routine play there. Kedron. Death V. Nice little break. This one could have a chance for Crypto, though. That one's going to float towards the back of the net. Trobe going to save it away. Super Nye. Now the wraparound. Death V as well. Still keeping the pressure on is the Saints. They're trying to do their best to maybe get a goal back here with this offensive possession. Haven't been successful just yet, and looks like the defense of Kedron is going to keep them at bay. Good pinch pass though off the back wall. Big push again from Kedron, but MRC Saints uh, defense holds this time around. They're all good positioning on the backboard there, but solved for a moment by Crypto. Crypto has been coming up as a star player, I've got to say, for the Saints. He, time and time, is making very good decisions. He's always there when he should be, and he's got four saves on board right now as a result of that. I mean, yeah, he looks really, really good against the Linwood squad as well. He had yeah. himself a handful of saves, put himself in the right place at the right time. And I can think back to a little bit of a segment that he had in that matchup where he at least had at least two or three saves. One of them didn't register, according to Rocket League, as being a shot towards net. But, yeah. you know, Rocket League's a little fluky that way, but... Regardless, I do agree with you on that too. one, though. Yeah. Coming out there. When they had the chance, they were looking good. Ghosty, great save there as Troby shoots one right at the line. Levi is looking for Troby again. The angle is going to be very, very tight there, though, and Levi is going to have to double back as Kedron continue to try for an attack here. Kedron up very, very definitely here and will continue that lead as Levi sends another one home. Yeah, that's just a good putback right there from Levi. The first initial save came from Super Nine. Didn't put enough power onto that one. He should have pushed it over into a corner instead of right mm. back towards midfield. That's usually, you know, nine times out of ten pretty dangerous, especially if you don't have to follow a block or somebody behind you in that situation. And yeah. that's exactly what happened right there for the Saints. A lot easier to make that call when you're not under the pressure because realistically you have to be focusing on three different things at that point. Death was there putting on pressure with the demo threat. The physical play was there online, so you've got to be yep. focusing on avoiding that. You've got to be focusing on making the touch at all, and then you've got to choose where you're putting it, and it didn't work out. And that is kind of where MRC Saints get this from as well. Levi making the poor choice, focusing on just reading that backboard, doesn't consider where the ball is going fully, and it drops into the hands of MRC Saints, who take a nice shot. Exactly. On top of that, the putback, you know, super nice, right place, right time. Um, but the first initial... Uh, the second save, I should say, should have came from Death V, who just kind of pushed out the box as well. Mm. Um, just left that one wide open for the Nets. So, taking full on advantage of that one is the Saints. They do score themselves their first goal, but there's only 35 seconds left oh, here. Levi! Levi with a banger of a shot. Catches the defense off guard. That was super nigh, and I believe uh, Ghosty towards the midfield. Fantastic placement on that, and right on 100 kilometers an hour on the dot. That is real people speeds. Mm -mm, nope. Never <laughs> heard of that before. What is that? K kilometers? I've never heard of it. K kilometers. That's the one. Aluminum. Okay. <laughs> Aluminum. <laughs> Aluminum. Water bottle. <laughs> what a bottle. <laughs> oh, is that just a caster thing? I don't think I've ever been in a caster <laughs> chat that hasn't at least had a mention to what a bottle. I, I mean, I just think it's just a, a newly just trendy thing that, you know, <laughs> people make British people say. So they just make fun of it because of it. But final seconds taken down here in game one, five to one in favor of Kedron so far. Saints falling in this first matchup and we knew it was gonna be a tough ask for them to rise up to the challenge of Kedron, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, they, they, they did a pretty decent job. Five saves for Crypto. We were talking about his Crypto and how much of an impact he has on the squad. A couple of shots as well. And at one point in time, he, he had the only shots for the Saints as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, a really, really strong showing for him. Supernoi came through with that one nice collection. I mean, it's good to see MRC Saint can punish mistakes, but there just weren't enough of them out of Kedron. Kedron weren't pressured there. MRC Saints seem to be a little threatened here. They're just dropping the ball a little much, and they're not making the challenges that they need to make to just put pressure onto Kedron to drop that ball to make those mistakes. Yeah. On top, I mean, the mistake that they did make, Kedron, uh, on the defensive end, the Saints took advantage of it, so... Uh, I, I really feel like the Saints just need to apply more pressure, and I feel like their whole entire game uh, sense, the whole entire game play, will just change dramatically because I feel like that's what they lack a lot of is just constant pressure. Sometimes they push up when they shouldn't be pushing up. Sometimes they push up, um, and they, I mean, sometimes they don't push up when they should be pushing up. So, I mean, it's just that lack of awareness that they're kind of struggling with on the offensive end. Ghosty though, whoa, tries to bring the mech out for MRC Saints. I haven't seen anything like that from Ghosty and he nearly pulled it off. Would love to see that challenge. Just needs that confidence, I suppose, and the time to get that set up. The initial touch is so important anytime you're gonna take the mech out. And looking towards midfield though, you saw Ghosty and Super Knight both trying to go for that first contact to bring that ball back towards the blue half of the field. Um, in my opinion, Ghosty did have that touch. I, I really feel like it should have been overtaken by Super 9, but it comes down to the communication. You mm. have to communicate with your teammate who's going to take over that ball and bring that one back towards the opposite half of the field to relieve that pressure that, uh, you know, Kedron has, um, and they have been applying. Really nice choices from Ghosty here. Positioning's been good. He has had to cover a lot of the field himself here on his own half. Ghosty guts beaten though. Troby cuts him out. And while we're trying not to give too much credit to this man, it is a brilliant shot. Yeah, that's a good shot. Good placement as well. Troby, like I said before, just the awareness level of this squad time and time again always impresses me. Just not Troby. Troby does not impress me. No, He's no, just a uh, mediocre never, player. Never, never. <laughs> <laughs> Levi in underneath. I so one of these days, it's just going to get clipped and they'll cut out the part that shows we're joking. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's like, whoops, you, it's canceled. He's a bully. He picks yeah, up high school students. Yeah, well, now students. I've just prompted it, haven't I? Shouldn't have said oh, anything. Geez. Thanks, Gex. I appreciate you, man. No, you're welcome. I've had well, a good I'll casting career. When the, uh, <laughs> when the the lawsuit comes to, comes to life. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Put this part for my lawyers. Thank you. <laughs> Troby underneath court. Can't do anything. Absolutely useless there. Troby, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> there goes Ghost. Ghosty There's with a great shot. That was a little bit too high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ghosty with a great shot. It was a little bit too high, though, but he did put that pressure initially onto the defense of Kedron, and uh, he, he backed him up temporarily. So, unfortunate they didn't walk away with the goal there, but still, I like the recognition from Ghosty. So far in this matchup, he's been playing a heck of a ball game. And uh, look, like you, like you see right there, just pushing up when usually that person from the Saints was never there. Kedron, again. Def is going to stay back in that corner as Troby makes a move on the ball. The pass comes through. This is what Kedron does so well, is just moving the ball upfield in such a controlled manner. They're not going for Big Mac. They're not doing what Linwood does. And they probably aren't as high rank, but they work so well as a team. They come together and they just make safe, guaranteed plays, and they do it over and over again. Yeah, when I was talking with Tins last week, I told them that, you know, the, the three teams, good save from Ghosty, Def B, going to have the follow-up touch, a couple of demolitions as well on the pitch, going to keep a lot of the gameplay slowed down a tad bit. But when I talked about uh, this last week with Tins, I was telling him that, um, you know, Kendron plays, I said Ken, I said Ken again, Kendron <laughs> plays such a different ball game. As we see, Levi shoots a shot, going to score that one, be up 2-0 to zero now. But, uh, Kedron plays such a different game than Linwood does, and Linwood plays such a different game than the Toners do. All these teams, by the way, were currently sitting at 6-2 and two when this stream started. So they all play so differently, but they all play so well against each other. It's like they're each other's kryptonite. Kedron yeah. would beat the Toners. Linwood beats Kendron. Kendron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, like, the Toners beat Linwood. It's like they all go back and back because they all have different play styles, and they don't know how to com combat against one another. And those top three do go through the playoffs as well, so it's good to see that all three of them are combating each other. They're going to have to keep it up uh, as they go into that section of play next week. Levi now on ground. If you're going to keep calling them Kendron, I'm just warning you now, I am not starting to call MRC Saints Bobby Tron. I have no idea what that even means. I just called them the Saints this whole entire season. <laughs>
Kedron is the only team I would say Kendron, and I thought I was you've saying got it right. You've got to have Bob, Bobby, right? That's, I mean, it's my only point. Uh, bo bo oh, you said Barbie. Got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought I thought you said something completely different. Chuck a shrimp on the. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm not Welcome going the stereotypical route. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm done here. <laughs> that, that, I just thought that might get it in your head better. I just every time he comes these. here, every time I talk to Whoops, that's all he can think about. Shrimp on the Barbie? Yeah, yeah. That's all you've got in your mind. 100%. I just know it. Food, you can see it behind your eyes. All the time, so I just want to say it every time. That well, it's into me this in time around, okay? <laughs> I, I just assume everybody, like you know, in in Australia, just has a, a big knife with them at every given moment of the day. <laughs> Who like, said they don't? <laughs> I'm gonna, I quit. I'm gonna under my chair right now. Okay. We <laughs> oh my! Thank you, Crypto. We're gonna kill this segment right here with Crypto's goal. <laughs> 35 seconds left here in game number one. Uh, we have ourselves a ball game now because the Saints are only down by one goal now, Gex. Speaking of cutting, the angle across net there cuts so tight for that shot as well. Actually, brilliant placement on that. And anywhere else in the net that was not making it through, oh, everything no. was covered. Levi, though, straight back the other way. It's in again. Yeah, that's just unfortunate. Good 50 50 from Levi. He gets enough momentum to swing him towards the net as well. Huge kickoff goal in favor of Kedron. You were very careful on the Kedron on that one. I could tell. Hey, you had I was, to make uh... sure. <laughs> Crypto back down to midfield. Trovi, good pass to death. Do they find the angle? No, but Levi might have been there to collect. Just can't quite read the bounce. Final second sticking away here. Game number two. I'm in shambles. <laughs> I thought we had ourselves a potential overtime situation, but instead we have ourselves a two-goal swing in favor of Kedron. And on top of that, possession going to the Saints, trying to maybe cut this oh, deficit Trevino. down to one. This one could find a mark. Oh. Ghosty going to misfire, though. Going to pop that one up in the air is Troby. And then right back to the um, towards the nets of the goal line of Kedron. Not going to matter, though. They're still going to win this ball game by two in a three to one fashion. Mm. And on top of that, Gex, move on. It's yep. a match point. Like once again, fights back by MRC Saints. I think realistically here, we are seeing confidence issues. Levi, Def, and Troby, not that far out of the skill range here from MRC Saints. Just takes a little bit more speed, a little bit more confidence on the ball and make those challenges early, especially if somebody is getting mechanical with the ball. That's what they should have learned out of the last two series. Let's hope they can put it into any more practice. Actually, no, they won't. We're over. That's uh, that might be it for the Saints, I think. Seeing as this is the last week of our uh, divisional play. Yeah, unfortunate. Like I said beforehand, this is the last week, and uh, the mm -hmm. Saints currently holding down that uh, last place spot, the sixth place spot here in Division One. So at least they got a win out, right? What was that? At least they got one win out for the season. Um, as yeah, well. they won last week. They won yeah. last week, I think. Uh, I can't remember who exactly who it was against. Uh, I can go back and look for you real quick. I want to say maybe it was the SPCC team. Actually, no, it wasn't. I lied to you. You would think that was the most likely, but who was it? I don't recall. I don't okay. recall. Uh, we'll we'll get a production on that. Maybe they can they can tell us who uh, they were able to get their win against. And we are going apparently into another another game here. Yeah, this is game number three, Gex. That's that's what Rocket League is. It's a best of five Straight series. Back in. Uh, you know, typically. That's what they that's what they mm -hmm. usually do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to search now. I'm trying to search uh who the Saints beat. I swear it was last week. I couldn't couldn't remember. I thought it was against Light and Tangy, but Light and Tangy. Actually, I think Light and Tangy, SPCC was the, the team who didn't have a win. I think they Tangy. made they might have won last week for the first time, I think it was. Tangy is a weird word. Tangy. Tangy. I'm sorry, Sometimes do you guys pronounce it differently here? Tangy? No, no, yeah. no big no g on the G, Tangy. Tangy. No, that's wrong. That's incorrect. I'm sorry. I tried. I tried, <laughs> man. I tried. <laughs> Keep trying. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. You, you need OC, right? We do not say yeah, Tangy. Yeah, yeah, 100%, okay. 100%. We do not say Tangy. And when I, come, when I come visit, everybody's got to teach me the lingo. You know, teach You're me. You're staying at my place, right? I've, got, I've already got the basement prepared for you. I mean, I don't know. Tins told me he has a nice place as well. So we were yeah, talking. Yeah, but he's going to put you in 
the bedroom, and that's 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 too much. Is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you're going in the basement. It's dungeon Hell time my. for whoops. <laughs> uh, I see MRC beats SPCC three to two in week three in the Twitch chat as well, and I see that oh. from Liam, our producer, as well. So I believe it was. Uh, yeah, that was their first win against SPCC, but I believe last oh. week the game I was thinking about was SPCC. They they picked up their first one, I think it was. So, yeah. Well, Troby just barely gets back to that. I thought he might have been caught out there. And MRC Saints might have had their first lead in the series so far. Troby might take that away from them. No boost, cannot get high enough for the read off the backboard. I love that read from Crypto, though. You saw the aggression, trying yeah. to keep that one yeah. away, keep that one towards the midfield line. He pre-jumped it. He had the right angle. I mean, it was a weird, awkward angle, but at the same time, he made it work. Troby, big misses. Whiffs from two members of Kedron here. They need to get it out of the MRC Saints defense here, though, and it will stay there. On goal line gets shot by Levi, and there's no chance of a save here. Everyone in shambles, and Levi just picks up the pieces. Yeah, Levi, I mean, Ghosty was almost there. He just could not get all his wheels on the ground on the goal line. So unfortunate, but that one was fired right back towards net, courtesy of Levi. And we were hoping that the Saints would maybe take the lead here. Like you said beforehand, the first lead of this series. Mm. It'll put them in better position to maybe take a game away from Kedron. Kedron. <laughs> to that back foot, Ken. Kedron, yes. Troby. Gonna cut through and go for the demo here. It was an unexpected play by apparently everybody. The team not really moving on that demo as Levi takes it into the corner from that pass from Troby. Big control here, down, trying to find Troby, and Supernai cuts through. Came in late in the last series, and Supernai has had an effect on MRC Saints' game in a positive way at times. Here could have been the missing factor there, but it's away with nothing again for MRC Saints. Two minutes remaining here in game number three. This is a lot better of a showing right here for the Saints. Ghosty tried to take advantage of that defensive rotation there. Troby keeps him at bay. Here comes Troby from the side wall. Oh. Picking that one up. Nice flick towards center. Gets the bump on the goalie as well. Denied by Ghosty off the back wall, though. Huge ask right here for the Saints defense to keep another shot away and have the counterattack to make themselves, or this one, an equal ball game. Troby, bump. I was going to say um, air dribble trying to go for the bump as well. Usually constantly putting that pressure onto the backs of the Saints defense. Ghosty got an enormous amount of power onto that boom up field. And for once, I would say that choice from MRC Saints was actually correct because it was plausible as an upfield pass. They so just couldn't quite make anything out of it there. But much better opportunities for MRC Saints we have seen arriving. But it is... Unfortunately, too little too late, I think. A minute left, and still in Kedron's control with a point up as well. Should be scary for MRC Saints. They've got opportunities left, and one goal means it could go to another game. They have to push for it, though. Great attempt at a oh. save from Crypto, but the power is just too overwhelming, and Def will pick it up. Yeah, that's just unfortunate. Crypto did everything he possibly can, and he's been playing perfectly these last two series and that one right there he just could not put enough mustard onto it. it hits off the right post and goes right in so two goals now in favor of Kedron and I tell you what I, I thought there was a glimmer of hope here for the Saints to you know tie this one up maybe force an overtime would have loved to see that out of the Saints but instead we have ourselves a game that's quickly dwindling down to the final second Skex Charby on it good 50 We'll go towards net. Super Nye takes it slow into control here. And some slow play at times has been what I've looked for out of the MRC Saints. Not in the challenge department, though. Once they have yeah. that ball, try and slow it down. Keep it in control instead of booming away. And there could have been more chances created for MRC Saints. As it goes, two shots on board as we close down the final seconds of this game. Kedron have had all the control. They have had all the shots an overwhelming offense here five shots for Troby three for death one for Levi two goals to display for it but it really has been Kedron's game to lose and they will not in fact collecting one more for the road Troby gets number three
Yeah, as soon as this one was up at the all zeros, I knew that there was going to be a goal regardless of who or what side was going to come from. Yeah. I knew it was going to be a goal, and that one is going to be, unfortunately, in favor of Trovi for a catch run. <laughs> three to zero in this game, number three, and they pull off the brooms and sweep the Saints in their final game here on stream. Heck of a showing, heck of a job here from the Saints all season long. They put up a fight, but like we said, they were just missing just that one key crucial component from their offense. And sometimes a little bit too yeah. many mistakes on the defensive end as well, uh, which ultimately led to the demise this whole entire season here in Division One. And honestly, you're right. There, there was a really good showing from them all season long. They constantly showed they had promise, that they had options available to them as a team. Uh, they didn't rise to the occasion, but it's rare that you can say there was a good showing at a last place team. This entire division has looked good at times. It has been overwhelmingly good for Kedron, though. They are just so confident and they are so reliable right now. Their decision making is impeccable. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. Kedron is, has just been, been that team, like I said, to beat this whole entire time. I know um, in the standings department, the Toners are in first place and they actually clinched and qualified you know, for the playoffs and things of that nature, but only a one game differential between the two teams, between Kedron and the Toners. And Kedron has beat the Toners twice, the only two games that the Toners wow. have actually lost. So, I mean, it's just been uh, a roller coaster ride of the season and Kedron has been, you know, pretty much on top of that, mm. on, the, on the apex of that uh, roller coaster. So, a heck of a job by Kedron, heck, heck of a job yeah. to the Saints as well. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the end of their run here, guys. It will indeed. And of course, we did say last week of divisional play today. So really, this is the last chance for the big showings for the teams left. And we do have more teams left. Yeah, I think we do have our next matchup on the board. We're going to see some more Kedron. And instead of it's going to be, instead of the Saints, it's going to be SPCC. i um, going to be taking on Kedron after this break. So stick with us. We have some more Rocket League action for you guys.
At least my therapist is saying that I should I don't believe it, but I really wish I could Instead, I guess I'll stay misunderstood
Hello. Hello and welcome back to the AEL High School. <laughs> I just wanted to see what Gex would do in that situation. And he literally <laughs> did not fail in that situation whatsoever. <laughs> but welcome back into the AEL High School Cup. This is Divisional League play, and this is week number five, the final week here in the regular season. And of course, if you guys missed uh, the action, then you guys missed a couple of crazy matchups. MRC Saints taking on Kendron uh, in this last matchup. I just said it again, guys. This is going to happen for the rest of the season. Uh, but Kendron, Kendron. Kendron. No, it's just Kendron now. They have to Kendron. change their name. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The courtesy of me, they're changing their name. <laughs> um, but yeah, Kedron beating the Saints in the 3 0 fashion. And now they're looking to do the same to SPCC, uh, Light and Tangy. You're sitting in the trial match right now. The guys are just playing it out and you're talking away and they are demoing you on field. Yeah. These guys yeah, have no be... mercy. They're, they're Ke Kendron, they deserve to be called it now. <laughs> just keep antagonizing you. Did they not learn their lesson? No, I mean, we have the power, just like, you know, the Transformers bundle in the shop, not sponsored by the way, but <laughs> <laughs> we have the power to uh, basically, you know. In the storm. And I'm, I'm not plugging in. You're the one who said it wasn't me, okay? Hey, hey. Yeah, I think you don't get in there for you. I don't have a Use code. someone's code, not just mine, but use someone's code who you love and one of your favorite content creators. Um, but yeah, um, speaking of which, speaking of sponsors, if you want to hop into the sponsors real quick, we have some great sponsors here on the stream that provide all the funding possible here and you know pretty much even provide some other additional things too that some of the teams may need uh start off with acer australia presenting partner of the high school series we provide pc technology solutions for all schooling needs in the classroom and at home as well and then of course followed by predator gaming the gaming pc partner who provide high-end gaming focused pc solutions in both laptop and desktop formats powered by intel of course and then number three, the AOC monitors. You need yourself a great monitor to pair with your great desktop. Um, go ahead and check out AOC monitors for the gaming. They're the gaming partner who provide the best in class monitor solutions for gaming and all your other needs. Get yourself slapping on some noodles. Indomie, the noodle partner made with high quality flour and selected ingredients and spices. A plate of Indomie Migoreng will certainly brighten up your day. Try any one of the flavors available today from your local grocer or at indomie.com.au. We all know that the gamers love the noodles. Uh, Game on Cancer, the charity of choice, of course, for the AEL as well, who fund much needed cancer research projects with the AEL donating a portion of all student participation fees to this life saving cause. If you'd like to donate as well, please head to the AEL's T Tiltify campaign page. Yeah, AEL's putting in a lot to back these guys, back them up as well. Back up AEL, back up Game on Cancer and uh, give everything you can. Exactly. And good point right there, Gex. Like you said beforehand, just a great campaign. And thank you very much to all of our sponsors, mm. not just, uh, you know, Game on Cancer, but that's probably you know, the most important one to both of us, of course. But moving on here uh, in the matchup today, we're going to be having, of course, like we talked about beforehand, that light and tangy squad taking on Hedge Run in this matchup. And basically, uh, I, I foresee just like another sweep happening in the future for me because, you know, Lightning Tank is a good squad. I think the Saints are just a tad bit better. They usually can com combat, uh, you know, teams like the Raptors pretty good. Lightning Tangy, they do such a good job, but at the same time, they're just so hit or miss. Yeah, I agree. And that's why we said early today that I don't think in this division there has been a single team that hasn't shown some serious promise. The yep. team that was in last place entering today went out there looking like they will remain that, and they still looked pretty good. They had a good showing all season long, and I expect SPCC to do the same. But like you said, there has been hit and miss results for them. SPCC need to stand up in their last showing here right now. Yeah, I mean, they have a good job or they have a good team to do it as well. I really feel like uh, just a tad bit, you know, we have players like Uke on the field and I'm glad I'm surprised and didn't say Uke or anything Uke. other d d different. He, he yelled That's at me like two Uke. weeks ago. No, I, I said, I said Luke. I think I said. Oh, I said Luke. Uke. Yeah. 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 yeah That's so true. I'm, it's I'm, not Luke. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's not Luke. He's got I, both I he hands. Yes. It's hard he to play Rocket League with the, yeah, uh, the robotic hand. <laughs> I lag. cried a little bit, guys. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie to you. Okay, like I, I wanted to go home, and I was just like, "This is not fun for me anymore. I don't want to be a caster anymore because I get yelled at by the players." Aww. <laughs> oh, whoops! You'll it's get over it. Fault. Just abuse him on region. field again. You have the power. We've already been over this. <laughs> Troby, who? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Who? What, what is a Troby? 
Yuke is Yuke. my guy. Yeah. Okay, Yuke's my uh, guy. We gotta watch Yuke. out for him. I, I really want to know if that is is a reference to ukuleles, because I would call a ukulele a uke. Get out the uke. I'm about to get out the uke. I'm gonna yeah, bust out the old uke and give yep. you a knee slapper. That's a terminology <laughs> I could I could get down with. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can get down the ukulele as well. That's why that's why he likes uh, his name so much. Yeah, I don't know yeah. where we're going with this conversation. He's this got point pride in the ukulele. His skill set is strong. But let's see if he can bring it on the field. Yeah, his 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 fingers are just you know they're poised. Like he works <laughs> yeah, them out exactly. from the ukulele. And play. like we said, he has and both hands. He's not got the, the input play. lag like Luke. <laughs> I don't know. We're, we're pretty much uh, starting to just stall for time as we're trying to wait for everybody to join the lobby. <laughs> That's what this looks like to, for you guys. Um, how do you foresee this one going, Gex? Um, I, this is Kedron all the way. They, like I said in the last series, they just have so much consistency. They, they make good decisions, and as a result, they tend to dominate the field. They win by large amounts, and even when they don't, they look like they are in control uh, of mm -hmm, the field. Yeah. They look comfortable in their own half, and they certainly look comfortable in their opponents. Well, I can agree with you on that one. I, I can foresee this one going to Kedron as well, because, you know, like I said beforehand, they're that team that, in my opinion, should be in first place, just based upon their play style and mm. things of that nature. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I already had some words before uh, the game differential, the, the one game differential just meaning so much. Dev B going to score or shoot a shot towards net. Going to be denied the score, I should say. Dev, now again, making that challenge. Midfield has been so important for Kedron time and time again because they're so reliable, they can kind of push their defense upfield and it keeps them even more reliable. If you keep your opponents from making shots, they're never going to score. I mean, typically that's how that works. <laughs> if you keep your opponents no, at like, aim. They can't shoot from midfield, then game is over, right? Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, if you, you jump on some of those passing plays, some jump on some of the uh, mm -hmm. you know obvious uh, you know shots that shouldn't be a shot, essentially, like that one from Chirobi, oh. you can deny that one. But yeah, typically, if you just deny a lot of the opportunities, you're typically going to win the game because there's not going to be that many shots towards that. Fantastic diving save on the line by Yuke there as well. Yuke has been. Probably the member to step up on SPCC time and time again. I would say he's probably substantially out ahead of his teammates in his own personal ranked games, but they do form a team fairly well. He needs to be backed up here, though. Now, well back. Rizza is not going to be able to make the play on. Does try for the physical play. A right choice there. It doesn't quite find the touch. Three minutes. Still a scoreless game. Trovi. Say, Trophy. He, he's just been the disruptor. I knew that was going to yeah. result in the goal. Definitely yeah. going to score for it, but he's like the calm, the, the, the calm of V1. If yeah. You might want to, you know, he, he's just that disruptor. The person you have to watch with because he's so deadly. He can score. He, yeah. he could have had a flick there, but instead he elects to push that one off the backboard, go for a bump on the goal line, and just open up the door for his teammates. It's such a selfless play. Yeah, particularly strong wording there and good choice of words was that he elected to do that. It was a choice. He had so much control because of the calmness and it was in stark contrast to his opponents there. They were panicking. They should have been. There's three people on field. Challenge. Send somebody forward. You just need the communication behind it and it doesn't matter who it is at that point. Frisco will be in favor of Kedron. <clears throat> at the, about the midway point in this matchup and you know the, the, it's not from lack of trying i would say from the defense oh, or from the offense placement. i would say for light and tangy but it's just been the, the pretty much the defense that has been keeping them at bay and light and tangy just haven't been able to capitalize on the offensive end like this shot right here from kedron yeah spcc light and tangy and they're, they're holding on to defense but we're past the midway point of this game and two up for kedron it's not looking great they need to get on this fast be shadow Nearly wins the kickoff there, but the cheat up works out well for Kedron. And I do like that fake from Levi as well. You saw he just, you know, put himself in that threatening position and uh, the defense didn't bite on it. But at the same time, you, you kind of have to think that that's going to be stored in the arsenal right there of Levi. Yeah. And it's going to make them yeah. second guess and second think as well as you see definitely going to score his second goal, making it three to zero. It kind of doesn't ho matter who is remaining in goal for this one. You have to try and go. Troby made it awkward no matter what way that was coming off the defender there. 
unless he got an insane touch to make it into corner, that was always turning into a goal for Kedron. And in 50 seconds now, we were talking about how close this game was, and I'm sorry that I cast a curse, light and dingy, <laughs> but it is what it is, and it was only a matter of oh, time, beautiful. but Shadow fires back. And they cut this lead down to two now. What a great passing play that Light and Tinky put together. Really, really beautiful little play here. It's just a simple one, but it's by the book. The placement is good. The pace between the players, very, very good there as well. Yuke actually, uh, just a moment ago, also got his hat trick of saves, the uh, saving medal going over there. And now a teammate stepping up to do work in the offense as well. Does mean that SPCC are showing the promise we were talking about. Shadow towards the right half of the field. Nuke trying oh, to Duke. get something going there, utilizing oh, the ceiling. Goodness. Shadow with a great read. The passing play, though, coming from Yuke, and then the defense not expecting this one to ricochet off the backboard like that. Def B caught mm. in an awkward situation. I mean, you've got to respect that the shot is close enough. You've got to go, but the misread costs them dearly. And SPCC, after an, a game of no offense, suddenly open the floodgates and the goals are coming through. This is much better pressure upfield. Yuke continuing to keep it in his opponent's half. Some midfield defense now could pay off if Yuke doesn't bump Rizza out of defense. Now, danger, Yuke having to make an awkward play at this because he's low on boost, and Levi will skim it over the top of Shadow to make a very fast goal. Yeah, I was wondering what Yuke was doing there in that situation, but then I saw his boost meter, and he mm, had, I think, yeah. 12 in his well, he tank. he had to use it, yeah. He had to use it. He had to put himself in that shooting lane that Zev I think, was uh, the person who was up there for Kedron. But at the same time, uh, Levi, just right place, finish that... Finish that shot, finish that uh, with, with authority too. I mean, that was a pretty speedy shot as, as, as close as it possibly was. Oh, Yuke fires one back as well. Great placement, good angle here. And what a passing play. It's a one, two between Yuke and Rizzo. Turns back down wall for the shot as well. Incredibly well communicated play there between Yuke and Rizzo. 46 seconds left, only down by one. We have ourselves a ball game now. Let's kick off goal right there from Levi. Rizza was trying to keep that one away from the Whoa. center. There goes Def B. I knew that was trouble as soon as it was ricocheted off the sidewall. The hesitation here, though. Yuke, whenever he's up and gets challenged, you see Shadow back away there. The choice should have been the jump, the safety touch. He was too concerned about a shot upfield. They needed defense at that moment. The final seconds here in game number one. 30 seconds to be exact, and I can think I can see Light and Tangy maybe making a push for a comeback, maybe trying to go down by one goal here in game number one, but mm -hmm. if not, they definitely have a lot to look forward to in game number two. Yeah. A lot of momentum to build on, a lot of offense that they started waking up with, and I think the defense was pretty solid for the majority of the game, just a couple of chances or a couple of mistakes on the back end. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, it was floodgates as soon as SPC scored their first one. Suddenly, the aggression just appeared out of nowhere out of this team. And if they can bring that into game two from the start, it's going to be a very, very different look for them. Well, that's going to be the end of game number one, five to three in favor of Kedron. And you know, walking away with a hat trick here in game number one is going to be Def V being the workhorse here for Kedron in this first game. Um, you know, pretty much a heck of a job from everybody on the Kedron side mm -hmm. of the field, but at the same time, you know, hats off the trophy as well. Three assists uh, and, and, and a goal as well. So a good job from both teams, but Kedron just a little bit too, I was going to say a little bit more momentum, a little bit more pressure from them here in game one. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Kedron did just have the better offensive game for most of that. But I got to say, SPCC stepped up and they impressed me with their plays. In fact, they were down three to zero and went down by a far lesser amount of goals. The, the, the goal differential dried up very, very quickly once their offense started. And if they had played the entire game like that, the math says they would have won it. What math is that? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm from America. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> sorry, uh, I forgot about your uh, education system. My bad. 
Yeah, it's just me. It's not the whole oh, America okay, in general. Yeah, it's, it's just, just me. I, I'm a product of the Chicago public school system. It's, it wasn't <laughs> the best, okay? <laughs> Hopping into game number two, though. Um, we see ourselves at that 0-0 scoreline so far. And um, what has to change here for, for Light and Tangy? Do they need more offense, more defense, a little bit more aggression? Like, you know, like the Saints needed? Or what do you see out here, Gex? And when in defense, don't be drastically desperate to make touches just like we saw there the big clear away that was directed at net you're not firing that from your backboard not without an insane backboard boom there's just no way so stop trying to play out to midfield and just go for clears that are giving away the ball but honestly if they can do that and they keep up the same aggression we saw from last game they wouldn't just win this by a little bit but they could win it by a lot and do you agree with that assessment so far, Kedron has had all of the pressure since the initial kickoff. Trophy, oh. almost a mistake right there from Shadow. That one could have found its way in. The follow-up touch, upper oh. 90 off the top crossbar. There is the first goal. Def B going to score. That's going to be his fourth one of the series. Upper 90 is underselling that one. Upper 99.9 .9 as <laughs> that one comes clanging off the bar. Down off a post as well and just manages to find its way through a maze of touches into the goal. Three minutes and 20 seconds left. Troby, open net, takes it slow off the backboard. Oh. The double touch is there. This is the patience we were talking about. This is the threat we were talking about as well. Troby can do it all. And there is the exclamation point in that sentence. And uh, yeah, it might be a slower goal, but this angle, he hunted for the shot and he actually found it on an incredibly tough ask. Kedron coming up with two here. There needs to be an answer soon from SPCC if they want a chance into this game. Three minutes. Game two. Kedron up oh. one to zero in the series. That was a little bit of a breakaway right there. Def B had it open net as well. He saw Troby on the goal line once again trying to be that disruptor no comes spcc has no idea who's going this is a disaster on the defensive front three members of the team just sitting in defense on the goal line nobody going until they nearly force out a triple commit you have to have the comms yeah not only that but you desperately need a clear here in this situation as well rizza is going to elect to be the person to do so he has no boost Whereas Shadow and you pretty much had 100 oh, in their tank oh. to try to get a clear there. Good shot. Def B not going to find the mark. Levi with the follow-up touch. Not going to find the mark either. Troby, though, keeping that pressure on. And this is what we were talking about. It doesn't have to be pretty goals. It, it results in things like this. It results in um, the, the boost starvation, the resources just being taken away from the defense. But again there, the the, uh, the double up of players in the same spot, a miscommunication, nobody knew where each other were. The comms, wow. the positions aren't there. And when that is the case, you can see stuff like this. Troby just cutting through a pack of players that don't know where each other are. Yeah, Yuke was in shambles. And then on top of that, in shambles was, I think that was Shadow on the back half trying to cover up the left post. But like you said, Troby just doing a good job cutting through that defense. And like I said beforehand, he has that solo pop-off ability, but he's just one of those patient players, and it's so smart as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's some big brains across Kedron. You don't get the consistency that Kedron has without just getting some IQ into this. There are some big brain players, and I can't believe I'm saying that, of Rocket League out there. <laughs> and uh, apparently the largest place you're going to find that pool is on Kedron. I think they're using up the brain cells for the rest of Rocket League. <laughs> oh my goodness, Gax with the hot take. <laughs> He's like not even an AEL, just the whole Oceania. No, yeah, just all of our OCS, everybody. it's it's everyone. No. Oh my. The, this is where the brain cells are. It's Kedron. <laughs> well, usually Kedron is that is that team. I always like to credit to, uh, you know, being the smarter players, being the, the mm. team that goes for more of the passing plays. Uh, Linwood has the solo pop off ability. I would mm. say uh, for the most part. The toners have like a really, really good defense and they have some breakaway uh, offense. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah. I, I would probably agree with you that that uh, Kedron is well, probably one of the smarter teams here in this uh, in this ADL. I mean, they have to be because they, they are coming through as, like you said, probably the most promising top team here in the division. 
and they are less mechanical. They don't have the physical ability that we see out of stuff like Linwood. And it doesn't matter. You can make that up with decision making. You can make that up with smarts. And you can overwhelm all of that good stuff as well. But just a good push forward. Rizza finally puts on some aggression. And Levi just not expecting it. Well, on top of that, I, I really feel like Levi was just a poor touch, a poor read. He, he put that one right back towards center. And we talked about this in, I think, the first series that we had. You cannot do that. Nine times out of ten, a lot of these players... Um, are going to expect that touch to go right back towards center. So they're going to take advantage of that touch and uh, nine times out of 10 score a goal. So that's why you don't push the ball right back towards the center of your net. You kind of try to push it into the corner. Even if you miss touch or have a misplay, just try to slow play it, um, you know, past the net or get in the way and it didn't work out for Levi. But the final seconds here in game number two, Dead's run winning this one so far, three to one. Could see some zero second shenanigans and maybe change that score line for the most part. But light and tangy, Doing a very, very good job. Oh my goodness. Keeping the defense at bay. Def B with an air dribble now. Going to try to score. Them. Low boost. And he had the flip reset. Push that one over into the corner. And there it is going to, going to lie. As we see Kedron surviving the final seconds here. Winning this one 3-1. to one. Kedron say shut up about mechanics. We've got that in the bag too. We're just choosing <laughs> to play smart. That exactly. was an I mean, unbelievable hold up of the ball there into a flip reset on no boost. Nearly able to salvage yet another goal out of that situation where nobody was really ready to score from Kedron. Yeah, I mean, as much as much flack as I give this team, I, I really do like Kedron um, mm. a lot. Kendron, I really do like them a lot. <laughs> yeah, I love um, Kendron. A lot of Kendron. No, a lot of Kedron. <laughs> I really do like this, this team a lot. I do put a lot of respect on them. And that's why I joke around with them a lot in the in the pregame yeah. lobbies and things of that nature. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why we're not gonna con correct Ken to Ked. It, it it is Kendron now, where we will <laughs> we will absolutely respect you. We've got the respect there. If, if it comes out, we're gonna make the uh, the correction. You know, that you deserves it. Well, speaking of deserving goals, look at Troby gonna score the first one here for Kedron. And uh, it's a, it's not the prettiest goal, like you said, but at the same time, right place, right time. Yes. You have to have that placement on the net because those ones aren't easy shots. And uh, really right choices. Once again, it's the big brain from Kedron. They are always aware of the field. They have serious uh, awareness of uh, positioning and the plays just come out. Even when they are awkward, even when they are slower, Choices made right make a big difference. Oh, choices made right there, but Def fails on the mechanical front and misses the shot. Comes away, and Levi denied on the line by Shadow. Lots of attention so far on the blue half of the field. It's pretty much been the story of this of the series so far, I think. You know, Kedron doing such a good job keeping the pressure and it's been light and tangy who have been struggling see a good save right there from Uke. have been struggling so far to kind of break away break into their half of the field we might have a breakaway right here def v have to respect this one i like the aggressiveness right there from rizza trying to maybe get a pinch upwards off the ceiling into an awkward touch a touch right there from troby as well but nonetheless i mean none of these shots really threatening shadow Again here, Rizza goes well past SPCC trying to make plays here. Whether you're calling them Kedron correctly or not, you have to say they were under threat there. Still could be if there's a good clear found here by SPCC, but Kedron just getting back so much control. The pass across, Troby has to get up. Nice spike down and you has save. the save. Yuke with the save in the lower 90. The double touch was there, but denying him single-handedly was Yuke. He has himself his second save of this game, keeping this one still 1-0. to zero. Light and Tangy have a chance, I was going to say, have a chance on the offensive end to try mm. to maybe equalize this one, but oh. still not, not really seeing the aggression, and uh, the demolitions are not really helping them out either. Yeah, I was going to say, not really seeing the players right now. They are off the field as Kedron... Are just going on a tear right now. They want nobody standing in their way. Def is now trying the boost of technique since apparently the demos were not working out. Still closing up the gaps. Def now with control. Troby taking out another one. This has got to be infuriating for SPCC and yet they're still firing on net. 
Yeah, this is how it looks like with for me. Troby was just demoing me nonstop on the bitch the whole entire time in the in the play. This is why lobby, we say Kendra. Lobby. It's, yeah, it's exactly. all Troby's fault. You can blame all Troby. For one player. I said, you do it one more three. time. I'm gonna just drop your stocks in Rocket League, and he did not listen. He didn't care. Another shot. You a little bit off target though. Zephy now with a far clear. This one's gonna be towards midfield. Troby trying to push that one the final distance over to the blue half oh. of the field. Knocking on the door now is Kedron. Can they score another goal and add on to this lead? Kedron actually kind of needed here just to secure their lead and they will find it. Levi with a nicely placed shot. A lot of physical pressure on the line here as well. And they do finally get their second goal out. But there has been a lot more fight back from SPCC, at least on the defensive front, than I think I've ever seen from them. Minute and 51 seconds left. This is still doable. You know, about a... Uh... A goal a minute. We've even seen some crazier things happen with uh, two minutes remaining, even 30 seconds remaining. We see some crazier things. This is a good chance right there. Yuke with a wraparound pass. There goes the shot towards the far post. That's Levi. Not going to find his mark, but still a short lived offensive segment for Light and Tangy. Not going to find the goal that they desperately need to cut the sleep down in half. There's a good cross. Oh! And that one going to be able to fall in. Not going to be able to keep that one out is the defensive light and tangy. 3 to 0 now in favor of Kedron. Kedron coming through really nicely here with their third and starting to look dominant as usual. But they had to fight to get to this point. It has been just the consistency for them holding through here, but one nice goal and they start to look like the team that we have been seeing up until this point. SPCC starting to falter, but Troby can't find another. It looks so good these last two games. Kedron looking for another sweep. They ready to push past the Saints. Now looking to push past Light and Tangy as well in the same fashion. Only have 60 seconds to go. Light and Tangy looking to knock on the door. Oh. They were there too. And then like that's what we've been talking about. It just hasn't been the aggression that they needed. Oh. This one, the fourth man coming out for Light and Tangy. Gonna rattle off the post and keep Kedron at bay. Off the backboard, Troby underneath. Great touch there in the follow. Great recoveries from Troby coming down. Def gets underneath it, but the defense holds. SPCC have been excellent with defense this game, but they haven't been able to get up the other end. Yuke trying now. Rizza is taken out of the play, just trying to follow that too closely. Yuke now has to make this work and get some control out of it. I doubt he's got boost though, and it doesn't look as though he does. As it comes away, the dying seconds of this game, it could be a shutout for Kedron. As the ball comes down, it will be Kedron taking another game. And there is the final one as well for Kedron. That's the third game in the sweeping fashion, like we talked about beforehand, Gex. Just remaining perfect on the day. Absolutely crazy, crazy performance from this squad. And, you know, hats off to SPCC. They, they did battle. They, they, for the most part, I, I want to say, thinking back, um, a lot of the games came down to, like, just that one possession that really opened up that floodgate. But for the most part, mm. they really combated them off ball. It was just the sheer lack of, like, um, what's the one I'm looking for here? The, the presence on the offensive end, the, the control of midfield that really kept mm. SPCC uh, you know, pretty much Kedron just pushed past them is what I'm trying to say. I mean, I don't really expect control of the midfield from SPCC, not against Kedron at least. Kedron have been absolutely dominant there. Of anywhere on field, it's midfield that they dominate. Their midfield defense has been excellent. But when you're coming up against a team that's going to do that and a team that likes to slow the play down at times to get a little bit more mecha mechanical, You've got to change it up. You've got to adapt, pull them in, go for the counter-attack play style or, or pressure. Just get into their half. Uh, you've got to do something differently. And they did at times. There was adaptation from SPCC Light and Tangy, but it's not enough to keep them in the game. And that will be their last showing in the season. Yeah, I was going to say that's unfortunately the end of, uh, you mm. know, the run here for uh, SPCC Light and Tangy. Uh, we're going to have a reschedule. I think we announced earlier yes. that it was going to be uh, SPCC versus the Ripley Raptors squad. But instead, we're going to be showing you guys a different matchup 
which I believe is going to be, if I'm not mistaken, Gex. I'm trying to stall for time as I'm trying to read at the same exact time. I'm trying not to say... The Toners versus Linwood, I believe, is the match we're going to be having. Yes, I'm not I mistaken. believe you're right. It's, te it's definitely Toners we're going to be seeing. I can't remember if it is Linwood or Kedron. Yes, it is Linwood. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be a big match. Uh, I think we might have lucked out on being able to see this one. Yeah, exactly. I think it's one of the better matches that we probably could have had this week, especially since, like, you know, not really any implications on the line by any means, yeah, but absolutely. at the same time, uh, we're, we'll talk about more, more of that as we come back from the break. But yeah, heck of a matchup so far from, you know, Kedron and uh, good job to SPCC. But unfortunately, like I said, they lose three to zero. But don't go anywhere. We have some more Rocket League action for you guys. So please stick with us through the short break. fall over my heart I black out the moon I wait for you to come around you got me dancing in the dark I close my eyes but I won't sleep tonight maybe you should come with me I'll take you to the dark side me and you you and me do bad things in the night Black heart, black keys, black diamonds, black out, black everything black. 
children of the night But it's the only way of life It's black holes pulling me inside Of this black heart, the black soul Underneath this black, black sky Hello, and welcome back to the AEL High School Divisional League play. This is the last week of Divisional League play. My name is Whoopshoot. Join alongside of me is my good friend Gex. So we're going to bring you guys this last match that we have on our docket, and it's probably the best one ever, Gex. I tell you that much right now, because it's going to be Linwood versus the Toners. Yeah, this is going to be very, very exciting. Linwood, who have some of the best mech coming in here right now. I would say two of the most skilled individual players in the competition in Linwood. Up against the Toners, who are sporting some amazing players themselves. But they've got the full team benefit here. They are just working as a roster right now. Linwood, they're going to have to be very careful on themselves. Both of these teams kind of 
It's an ineffectual match as far as going forward right now. I believe Tona's already locked in and Linwood should be as well after their earlier game. And uh, that does mean that this is a... Effectively, this is going to be a match for the ego. It's, 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 it's like a live the, scrimmage the is what we like to... Well, yeah, yeah. Live, live scrimmage is what I like to call it, compare it to whatever you want to say. But at the Friendly. same time, I really feel like... Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what kind of match we're going to get out of, out of these two teams. I'm not mm. sure, sure how serious, like you said, they're going to take it at this point in time. Um, I would really want to see them try and see, you know, like act like there's everything on the line. Essentially, this yeah. this game is what's going to be what matters because, you know, for the most part, the only team that has been able to combat the toners all season long has been Kedra. And we just yeah. saw them on stream twice back to back. And we were talking about, you know, how much how how much kryptonite uh you know how good linwood looks but basically how good the toners are and how good the toners combat against linwood and vice versa um so i would love to see and bring it to you guys but i'm just not too sure what team we're going to see out here on the pitch yeah exactly like you said earlier as well it, it does come down to a bit of a paper scissors rock kind of situation here where one of the top three teams can always beat the other and uh coming out of that we don't expect linwood to be the team that beats the toners that uh, toners yeah. is rock to linwood scissors uh, and i think they can overcome that but it's gonna take a big push yeah i mean that's pretty much the best comparison you could come up with right there i really think that just you know just nails it through is rock paper scissors you know rock beats paper uh you know vice versa paper beats scissors whatever it may be whatever scissors beats paper <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say uh, in my brain, it makes sense. But I'm trying to say that, like, you know, the toners are rock, Linwood is paper, and I'm... essentially, you know, Kedron is the last one. I can't think of it. Look, if, I, if I, I ever need to make a decision and I, I know which option I'm going with, I will verse you in a game of paper, scissors, rock. I'll do it right I, now. Like, say it listening to you just then, it, you, you're going to think you've won, and I've got you dead to rights. All right, easy, listen, we're going to play easy. rock, paper, scissors right now. Okay, ready? <laughs> one, two, three. On shoot. Oh, never mind. They changed, they changed the scene. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Can we have the saved camera Saved by back? the bell, Gax. No, no, you're saved by the, the bell. You didn't want, wait, you didn't want the go. smoke. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> we both insisted. <laughs> it's a the tie. Game. It's a tie. Let's get in game. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Game one going to start here. <laughs> Thank this you, is production. Be, like I said, the best, the best matchup that we had all day, in my personal opinion. Hopefully, these two teams take it as serious as we were in that Rock, Paper, Scissors game. Yeah, I, three, two, one was the countdown in game as well. So we were, we were betting on uh, the closeness of this match. Let's hope because if it is dead even like that, this could be anybody's series. Yeah, I would hope to see. I think we have a two v three actually on our hands right here that yeah, we haven't we really got to talk about oh. it. The two men are going to win this one so far. That's going to be the first goal, and that's going to be the Toners taking the lead. Yeah, brilliance and Critic coming in for Toners, missing their third means that Linwood should have an advantage here, but Toners are kicking us off right. Brilliance just pushing it through the tiniest of gaps there, widening the defense of, to of uh, Linwood and getting the first one through. Yeah, and this is all too familiar to Linwood, who started this series off... Uh, you know, pretty much a two to two v two in that first game. Thinking all the way back about uh, two three hours ago when the stream first started, uh, we had to start the two v two, then the two v three, then it was the traditional three v three. But still, Linwood pushed past and got the ultimate victory. Now the shoe's on the other foot. Now it's a three v two, and we would think that uh, you know Linwood would have enough muscle to push past the Toners, but for the most part, the Toners have been controlling this ball game. Have indeed still. A lot of time left here. Linwood, we kind of expect them to pick up here. And a 3v2, I imagine that they're going to go for a lot of high mech plays, slow it down. They're certainly looking for it here. Xavier getting underneath, pulling the mech out, looking for Matthew now. Off that backboard it comes. Matthew would have had the angle. The block is there. And it will be taken away as an opportunity for Linwood, who are really pacing themselves here. This is an odd look for them. I mean, I don't know why they're slow playing it so much. I mean, for the most part, they have an open door right there, just a slight open window. That one shot too high, though, from Sweat. Uh, mm. But Brilliance and, uh, for the most part, Critic, they, they've been doing such a good job. Oh, Matthew. At, uh, there it I'm is. I'm not going to finish my sentence. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, the, 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 the carry. They're, they're shutting you down. Whoops. Uh, this, is, this is not on you. This is on them. 
Matthew, I'll have words with him. He's one of my players now. He's even got the one and he ta uh, tag in the uh, photo, but yeah, I'll, I'll have words with him for you. It's Thank right. you. Thank you. Please, please do that yep. because I mean, he, he just embarrassed me live on stream. We can't have that happen again. <laughs> <laughs> words will be had Word, words will be spoken no i mean Criticism. i was gonna say for the most part uh the toners were doing such a good job on the defensive end they were keeping you know the the offensive limb would just even off of their side of the field for the most part and you know with the two members it, it was kind of crazy to see that because i expected a little bit more from linwood but now they equalize the scoreline and they take away my awesome point that i was gonna bring up i mean or matthew is a great player but i, I like what do we call it? Like casters before blasters? That's the one. That's what is I'm that, going. Is with. that a saying? Is that that's, a saying? That's what I'm, make, that I'm making. that right now. No, it's it hasn't been before. I'm what just, does it even mean? You know, a uh, word crafting man here. <laughs> what does that even mean? Is that a Star Wars you reference? Blast I, shots on. Hmm. Casters before know. blasters. That's that's what I'm going. I, with. I don't think that's going to accept stick. it. <laughs> Matt, I'm trying to support you here. Matthew is still making you look like a fool. Matthew, 33k an hour goal, and it is home. Two to one. Oh, I love you, Shut Jax. Up. I love you. It's, it's a good goal. It's a good goal as well. Of course, the the chat calling for Matthew to clip on his uh to, to clip on the toners here, but I don't think it's going to be Matthew who's clipping on anybody at that given time. It's just a great goal, uh, for the most part for Linwood. So. Two minutes remaining in this ball game, game number one. And uh, we, ever since I've been talking about the toners and their offense and how well they were doing, they really haven't had so much offense uh, on their half of the field yet. Literally supporting you and you're ripping me apart on stream. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm telling sorry. mom, okay? No, here we go. We're back in this. We'll have words after, just like Matthew and I. Xavier now trying to bring me back into gameplay mode as Matthew gets underneath. Great touch. Billions is just in the way and can't be found for the demo either so we are seeing Linwood struggle on the offense here but they are taking it slow and I think that just comes down to the fact that like we pointed out this is a match for fun this is a friendly the importance of this match is out the window yeah and I mean maybe that's the reason why we're not seeing the third member here from uh from the toners yeah um, but at the same time like I said I I would really want to bring that final match Again. you know just kind of just solidify this whole entire season you know what i mean just yes yeah, put an exclamation it, point you know? on it exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, but, exactly it's your last chance before you go into the next kind of play that you, as you're coming out of the divisionals it's your last chance to make that impression put the fear into your opponents well obviously fergo is just too cool for us uh, to join us here on stream so 40 seconds <laughs> left here in game number one fergo's so off far. practicing for the odl as well so <laughs> maybe he's in scrims never know I don't, I don't know. I'm just disappointed. 30 seconds now. Linwood up 2-1 to one in this matchup, which we pretty much expected, but I expected the Toners uh, to pretty much win the matchup overall. I had no idea they actually only had two players, so it was not given to me. No. Yeah. Final second sticking away. We have another chance here. Brilliance going to bring this one upfield. That one's going to be taking Matthew. Dangerous territory. Can he get the air dribble away? He does. And he gets the bump on Critic as well. Critic has to waste the resources. I must pop right back into the corner. Xavier, you're going to keep that one at bay. Critic forces it too hard off the wall. It's going to fall towards midfield, and Linwood hang on in a two-to-one fashion. A good game by Linwood, and they always kind of had that game in control. I think they they took easier options on themselves that meant that they didn't score by win by as much, keeping it closer. But you have to say, Toners did put in the work. They looked mm -hmm. good for a 2v3. Yeah, they really did. And like I said, it was just... The first initial half of the game, I think it was in favor of the Toners, but then, like I said, was, the longer this one went on, Linwood started to pick up the pace a little bit more and started to turn it over in their favor. Only one shot coming through for the Toners. That just, just, just goes to show you how hard it was to push past Linwood. Um, one shot, one goal, though. You have to have a little bit more offense there for the Toners. So it's just unfortunate that, uh, like I said, we're missing Fergo from the starting roster. So we would have had ourselves a pretty decent ball game, maybe even potential overtime in that game number one. Yeah. We've still got potential for it going into game number two. So let's get on field as the Toners continue to enter with their two-player roster right now. Linwood with the upper hand well and truly, and they did prove it in game one. Is there a response? Is there some absolute pop-off moment that can mean that Toners, out of a game that would have been close regardless with a three-man roster, can they pull through even without it? 
We're going to have to wait and see if that's going to happen or not. Good shot. Saved away. I believe that's Matthew. We kept that one away. Sorry, I had my name player bug glitch that you were talking about for a second yeah, there, but yeah. it was just just me there, Gex. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bug. The, the, the bug was in the brain. Gotcha. Just gotcha. just hitting just hitting the button too many times to take yeah. away the name plates. So I've, I've done that before. I'm like, oh no, let's cycle through real quick. <laughs> H is a brilliant key on the keyboard. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, a little production. Uh, what's tip. the word I'm looking for here? A little tip, I guess. Yeah, if you're ever doing production on the back end, you hit H twice and you get to rid of the scoreboard and player names, everything else that you guys don't ever see. Good shot. Open net. Oh. Sweat. Too far off the right side. Brilliance now towards midfield. He has a decent chance at this one. Matthew going to gather that one up, though. Quickly bring it right back towards the other end. He has the second touch. That was going to be overtaken, though, by Xavier. Tried to put the final touch onto that one just to not make its mark. Yeah, you guys shouldn't ever see that stuff, but it's uh, that's... That's the responsibility of production, which means you've probably seen it plenty of times. You know, there's, yeah, there's only so much we NA. can do from our end. Yeah. <laughs> Typical NA I'm production. I'm getting in trouble, 100%. You know. Yeah, he's fired, guys. He's going to go to the principal's <laughs> office after this. How many times are we going to get fired during a stream? That's my question. I, I think I think they're not going to have us together anymore. That's just no, what it's going to come out. down to. Matthew, <laughs> good save there. Chance for Toners to get a lead for a moment. It's just unfortunate. There comes Brilliance now. He has a lot of boost. Xavier not even giving him the time of day to establish his footing there in that situation. So unfortunate. This is a slow roller lingered in front of the net. Not going to be dangerous. Brilliance now has a second crack at it as the air dribble. Can he get it past? No, going to be denied again from this very, very tough Linwood squad. And they should be. They have players on field, which is kind of a big difference here. These teams should have been an incredibly close matchup, and they still are, but maybe for the wrong reasons here. Linwood are trying to make impressive shots. They want to make a name for themselves on quality, not quantity, and the bump from Matthew is going to make a quality goal come through here. They just, I think there's a little bit of an underestimation of Toners. Even with two players, you give them time, they will rotate fast enough to make that defense count. I mean, it's just the the understand uh, the understatement from uh, in general. I think in a two v three situation, you, you you literally have to play like it's a two v two, but at the same time, you have to account for that you know that third person just always being back. Not a traditional like oh he's always sitting back in goal type thing because that doesn't work. We we all know that that doesn't happen. But at the same time, you have to kind of account for that third man there. So it's just unfortunate because they have to play at the high pace of play. But it's like the question of how long can they maintain that, you know, because it's, it's just such quick decision making that has to happen at every given second. And I don't mm. think the Tilgers can compete with that, especially when it comes down from Linwood. Yeah, and with Linwood at full power right now as well, that is that is such a tough ask. So Toners, they are definitely going down here, but two to zero is not the worst way to do it when you are playing under adverse circumstances. Matthew now. Might be facing some of his own as becomes a 2v1 for just a moment. But Critic, he wants to style and he's going to do it. Backboard shot. And that is a brilliant statement on a difficult match. Yeah, that was insane right there from Critic. Just the read, the flip reset to push that one, put his car in the best position possible. That was absolutely peak performance from Critic giving the toners their first goal. And more importantly, cutting that lead in half as well. Only down by one now. They approach the minute and 45 second mark and they quickly gather up that possession, go right back to work. Critic is in the corner. Maybe oh. trying to get a pass over to Brilliance. He did put that one, I was going to say, towards center, but at the same time, Critic or uh, Brilliance, Brilliance just didn't want to put himself in that position to kind of do that. And oh my goodness, Gax, walk us through yeah. what happened here on the back end. Hey, Matthew just took control of the ball and Critic under full pressure. It's a bit of an easy decision to make the fake there. Matthew does it well and. He looks good for it, but it's just, they're trying to embarrass Toners here. Most of the time it's not working. That particular goal comes out quite nicely. Yeah, I just, wow. You, it, you, you have to have that in your arsenal. You know, the mind games and Matthew yeah. pulled that one off just so cleanly. But there's nothing you can really do in that situation. It's a guessing game at that point in time. You can only try to put yourself in the way of the path. And, you know, unfortunately for them, they just, uh, you know, bit on the fake, essentially. Matthew can't quite reach that. 
Xavier underneath. Good shot towards net. Critic does make it back in time. The pace off of Xavier's shot just not found. That has been a noticeable thing here for me is just that Linwood, because they're so mech heavy, because that is their focus, they slow down every play. It becomes a little bit predictable, and most of the time, these high quality shots are low speed and can be read out. And I really feel like the toners just aren't themselves either, because like we talked about beforehand, they're the type of team that mm. like to utilize passing plays. Yeah. They're not the flashiest of teams. They like to utilize some passing plays. And, you know, these 1v1 play styles, even though Critic is going to score himself a second goal here with a dunk. No, that's a passing play. Um, it's, it's, it's getting involved. I was going to say, it's typically not how they score goals. They <laughs> literally score goals off a pass. They mm. usually get a lot of assists here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I... I absolutely think that's that is definitely a passing player that was that was put in by linwood there they, they just added a player to the roster for toners for a moment toners benefit immediately brilliance though trying to be that brilliance isn't quite shining just yet critic down to the floor brilliance is going to challenge again but zero boost a bump on sweat they are one goal away from taking us to that overtime and they just can't find control it goes to ground linwood take game two yeah, such a good attempt there towards the tail end. Had he had some boost, I really, really feel like Williams could have probably combated that one just a tad bit better, but at the same time, it's not going to matter. Linwood going to go ahead and force a uh, match point now in their favor, winning that last matchup. Like he said, three to two. So mm. good showing so far from the toners. Good showing in particularly from Critic as well, thinking back to that all-star play that he had, the air dribble, yeah. you know, tough read, double tap off the back wall, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, he, he's the only person who kind of uh, scored there for the toners in that game number two. Brilliance did a pretty decent job, but at the same time, we just didn't really see too much out of him. I, I think the toners really don't ever look poor. It's, it's hard to get them looking poor, but they certainly don't look their best right now. They can't without their third player. Like you said, they are a team playing roster. That is their play style. They will always exactly. try to make connections and the connections aren't available right now. Brilliance and Critic do make a connections with the fronts of their cars. They get out of it and have control here. A fake from Critic means he still has control. 100 boost pick up there as well, but can't get the ball up the other end of the field. Matthew wants control of his own, dribbles through his own team. Let me ask you this, Gex. Since we were both here for this Linwood match earlier when they had two members, who do you think might win in a 2v2 matchup? Do you think uh, Matthew and Xavier win this matchup in a 2v2? Or do you think Critic and Brilliance can actually, uh, you know, maybe showcase a little bit better in a 2v2 normally? I think Matthew and Xavier are probably the strongest duo in this competition. I don't think there's any team that could take them down in that regard. But that's because 2v2s is far more mech based uh, you have more time on the ball the the rotations just aren't as quick on defense and that yeah. allows xavier and matthew to profit off of their best skill set uh, when it comes down to 3v3 you can challenge them fast enough to shut them down and that is what toners normally do well you can't challenge that fast when you've only got two players well, this is a little bit of a mistake right here brilliance laid that one up for um critic to kind of get the far clear but he got demoed in the process and on top of that the boost was stolen <laughs> xavier is showing off the mechanical skills right there with a perfect pin perfect air dribble over into the upper 90 what an absolutely disgusting shot right there from xavier i don't know how he had the boost for that he seemed to be in the air for just about forever but maybe that was just because it was like slow-mo he absolutely had perfect control over that ball i truly believe watching that that if he had infinite boost he could keep the ball up for as long as he wanted yeah that was insanely clean he started that play with like 100 boost and he utilized all of it i think he had yeah. 16 left towards the tail end i was watching the replay just now yeah still had like you said a lot of boost in his tank and he just knew exactly what to do in that situation so great oh, first goal right there for linwood matthew had a chance at that one maybe a double touch but that one's gonna be gathered up towards midfield brilliance nice pass critic gonna be covered up by matthew as well this is the interesting situation right there brilliance going for that hundred pad instead of electing to go for the challenge early on and i think you're right with that one gex i really feel like you know good players as uh, as, as brilliance and critic are they desperately do rely on that third man. So I think they do thrive mm. in threes a lot more and better than Matthew and Xavier would. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there are just threes rosters. Yeah, there's there's teams that are built for kind of the skill set of the players on board. And without just one of them, their team falls apart. And I think that's some of the best players in the game. You look across at all of the best teams in the world and they are showing really strong skill sets per player. You can't specialize that heavy, heavily and not drop off on something. Look at freestylers. You see some of the most unbelievable mechanics you will ever see out of freestylers. And yet most of them lack in some other department because you can't focus that heavily on one thing without something else suffering. I do agree with you on that one too. The same argument can be made for like 1v1s as well. You know, 1v1s, a lot of players who excel in ones, they're used to that freedom, they're used to the mind games, they're used to the trickery, and they're used to, more importantly, the space that provides them in that 1v1 situation. So you can have the mechanics, and this one could be a shot. That one's saved away though by Critic. You could have the uh, the best mechanics in ones, but they just ne necessarily transfer over to a 3v3 format. So yeah. I do agree with you that there is some specialty roles and you know some people are just better at threes naturally than they are at twos and vice versa. So in this situation, the toners are definitely uh, falling a little bit flat as far as that note goes. Let's see what I did there, Gex? As far as... Uh -huh. Flat. No, I quit. Gotcha. I, I retire. I retire. <laughs> Sorry, we don't even have to fire him for that one. He's out on his own uh, accord. I see how it is, though. You know, you know you're going to get I fired. I played my own tune on the way out here. Just, yeah. Oh, no. He's still on the note. No jokes. <sighs> do I, do, am I allowed to quit, too? Uh, I, this is <laughs> the hard working conditions. Another one in, regardless, for Linwood. They're just kind of taking it easy here, and they can afford to, because Toners, they're really suffering without their third. Yeah, it's just unfortunate to see. Like I said, I really wanted and looked forward to this match, especially bringing it to the stream and stuff like that. But like we said beforehand, we just oh, weren't team. sure. Oh. oh, man. We weren't sure what team we were going to see. And unfortunately, it was uh, this this, huh? this toner's team who's in shambles. They do cut the deficit down by one now. 53 mm. seconds left. Maybe we're cutting them out too early. I The... the only reason I say no to that is because that was all on Linwood. Toners, yes, Critic has a lot of control over the ball. Yes, he made the right choices there, but Linwood really, they they had to be just playing for fun here, and that's what they were doing. That opened up the chance for that goal. Sometimes that's all you need. A little bit of a chance. 45 seconds brilliance towards midfield. That's a good take right there from Critic. Matthew with a far clear though. No boost over on that left side of the field as well. Brilliance with a good rotation through. He was using a lot of boost on the on the rotation back through, trying to get that offense established. Matthew, Xavier gets tangled up just a tad bit, just enough though for Critic. It's put a good 50-50 challenge towards that midfield line. Here comes Brilliance now, has a lot of boost. Trying to get the 50-50s down as well. Pass towards mid, not gonna find Critic. The critic had to rotate back through towards the back oh. end, and oh no, that's a mistake. I think that the toners are sorry that Linwood was looking for, oh, no. and no, even more of a mistake right there <laughs> from critic. <laughs> Unfortunate sequence of events that just happened for the toners. You're always looking for that one. I can guarantee in the voice chat just then was we take those <laughs> because you do. You always take those. The best goal is an own goal if you're the opponents because it's. It's the least work you have to put in for it. And unfortunately, it's what Linwood take out as their final goal here. Linwood coming through looking very good, but they were always going to. They had the full three-man squad. Yeah, and like I said, Linwood really thrives, uh, especially in that 3v3 format like that. I mean, the toners usually thrive a lot more. Like I said, they're more the uh, the team chemistry, the, the team plays. You see some of the passing plays that these guys like to throw at the, uh, at the pitch there. So it's just unfortunate mm. that they may have that third member to combat Linwood like that. But like I said, this game really didn't matter too much because of the fact that Linwood, I'm sorry, the Toners were already clinched and they're already in the playoffs yeah. as well. Um, so. They were the only guaranteed team as of last week. Now, of course, everything kind of set in stone now, guys. Yeah, exactly. Uh, set in stone indeed, especially as we finish up our broadcast here because that was our last series. It means that we can go and have a look back through that uh, as well. So some awesome stuff coming through from all the divisions really we've only had a look into the one and we can see some just results coming through there the numbers do not lie and some of these teams are going to be a big threat to the likes of the toners to the likes of Linwood. yeah i mean it's definitely going to be a difference once the playoffs starts and i really feel like everyone kind of gets a grasp as to what uh 
what like how these how the teams play and things like that so it's not really going to be a surprise anymore you're going to have to go back and study some of the film study some of the plays that you know the toners so the, the team like the toners some of some of the teams like linwood see what they did what made them successful and try to implement that into your gameplay or just go in there just play the best rocket league that you possibly can and, and roll the dice essentially too so hats off to linwood hats off to the toners as well they're going to round out the season um, and that's the last game of the regular season. But we're going to talk about uh, the day schedule and the standings and things like that, what that really means as we head into the uh, in, in ne next week, essentially, of uh, the show. Uh, just to give you guys a little brief recap as to what happened today, we, of course, had Linwood on the stream against the Saints, and that was a uh, 2v2 that turned into a 2v3 that turned into just a 3v3. Regardless <laughs> of the fact, Linwood won that matchup 3-0 to zero over the Saints. And then, of course, catch run. Kedron. <laughs> Kedron wins try, over the Saints. Try and yell the accent thing. I appreciate it. <laughs> Kedron? Kedron. <laughs> I can't do it. Yep. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm not ever going to try again. That was fine. Uh, Kedron I accept it. <laughs> wins over the Saints in a 3 0 fashion. Uh, SPCC Light and Tangy came out here and they lost to Kedron as well in a 3 0 fashion. Lots of sweeps, all sweeps today. And of course, mm. the last matchup as well. Uh, you guys just watched the Toners taking on Linwood and Linwood won that matchup 3 0. Um, so hopping into the division standings, Gex, what does it look like? I mean, today we were expecting the three zeros. It's how the bracket should work out, but we are moving in and out of these divisions. We're seeing a few big standouts. Look at Trinity Esports, Division 3, standing on top with 11 wins, one loss. That is an enormous game differential, 29 positive there for trinity they are coming out of their group looking so unbelievable yeah they just were an absolute terror the whole entire division week in week out they were just there on top of the leaderboard and just you know pushing the distance even further and further and further each and every week but mm. i like division two division two is so much more uh closer uh like the the watermelon squad we got to see where they kind of fell in div, div two i think last week they were mm. sitting around second or third place i believe now they're in first Let's go, Watermelon! <laughs> watermelon. I knew that they could be. YVG Watermelon have always been strong. It's, uh, if you were wondering about that Division 3, the, the qualifying teams out of that were Trinity, JPC, RL2, Whitebridge number 2, and SCCC White out of here. It's going to be YVG Watermelon like you're talking about. Finally topping that leaderboard by a single game in game yep. differential. There is nothing between them and PCS. That is going to be an enormous competition and followed by JPC RL1 and Aces RL3. So both JPC squads making it through. Exactly, and that's what I was talking about too, but what happened in Division 1 was that one game differential last week, uh, Kedron and the Toners, basically the Toners securing that first place spot um, with that one game, game differential over Kedron. So, I mean, absolutely crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's as well for Division One. Ripley. Um, currently, that match is going on. I believe they're winning two to one in that matchup as well. But I'm not too sure if even Ripley uh, was even at full strength. And then last week they were kind of struggling as well. They were they were losing the player, missed the player as well. That's what kind of happens here um, with when it comes down to like uh, you know players going on vacation and things of that nature. You know, it's, it's summertime over here. Mm. And uh, speaking of one game differential there, it actually did define a qualifier for that Division 2 as well. Uh, Aces RL3 did get in as that fourth place spot. The Turtle version of NRG uh, was the exact same series scores. One game difference with the negative eight kept them out of qualifying. So that is brutal for them. Going through that last division, you guys got to see it here on stream. Again, no difference in the series scores Kedron and Linwood going head to head 8 to 2 with uh, Kedron picking up some wins today as well as Linwood 19 game differential for Kedron and 16 for Linwood and no big big differences in game differential separating the qualifications out of uh, division 1 there either well none of this would be possible Gex without a course our lovely, lovely sponsors. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors, and I'd like to hopefully you guys can kind of pick up uh, some of these products as well that these sponsors offer just to support us, support the AEL. Um, so the first one, of course, is Acer. 
you guys want to head over to acer.com right there look at some of the uh options that they have for you guys but uh they're the partner of the high school series who provide pc technology solutions for all of schooling needs in the classroom and at home as well uh predator gaming the gaming pc partner who provide high-end gaming focused pc solutions in both laptop and desktop formats and of course they're powered by intel and last but not least we have aoc monitors the gaming monitor partner who provide best in-class monitor solutions for all gaming and other needs and indomi the noodle partner made with high quality flour selected ingredients and spices a plate of indomi mingori uh did i say that right um, me goring but, yeah me goring that's why i said 100 uh, <laughs> percent will certainly brighten up your day try one of the flavors available today at your local grocer or at indomi.com.au and of course last but not least game on cancer the charity of choice for the ael who fund much needed cancer research pro projects with the ael donating a portion of all student participation fees to this life-saving cause if you guys want to donate please visit the tiltify page um, or scan that QR code that you guys see on your guys' screen right there and support to a good cause. And of course, the last two teams that we didn't announce getting through out of that Division 1, Toners and Ripley Raptors, will be very happy to those sponsors for coming on board and making it possible for them to play out, as well as we move into the next section of the competition. But for this part, we are done. This is Divisions wrapped up incredible stuff out of the uh, opening weeks for this competition but we move onward yeah we do we're looking on to the the playoffs and uh you know national play whatever you want to call it um it's just it's just insane to me um that we've kind of come this far gex it's, it's literally been mm. just you know i've been here every single week but i mean for you it's probably hasn't been as as, as long but it, it, it's felt short in my personal opinion to be honest yeah. with you it really no, hasn't it has. been that long at all yeah, I mean, uh, it's only one part of a very long competition here, though it is going to take it out of these players. It's putting them to the test and it's giving them the competition they really deserve. The uh, high school leagues, so many players coming out at that age bracket that are just incredible. I mean, look across the globe. It's not just OCE. We are coming up out of this as well, but look across at everybody. The top player in the world right now, there is argument for it, of course, but uh, by most people's recognition is Zen, a 16-year-old kid just coming out. He's high school age. If he can do it, anybody can. So if you haven't signed up before, wait for this season uh, and go into the signups. Get your school involved as well because there is awesome stuff happening in the high school scene. I mean, high school scene here in EU, I mean, I, I can just tell you right now you, for NA, the high school scene is definitely on the up and up as well. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, you have a lot of colleges recruiting for those said teams too. So, I mean, that might be an option yeah. for some of these Australian kids too, to go over to the States, go over to Europe, maybe and do some uni play too. Look at the best mm -hmm. European team, just won worlds, you know, over all these NA teams as well. So the, the sky's the limit. If you're good enough, you can definitely do it. Don't be afraid to take a risk and to, uh, you know, maybe join our scrim against some of these other players around the world and you know make that move to try to make yourself better a better player as well so that's that's what i'm gonna say here that's what i'm gonna end that one with here gex and you know thank you guys very very much for an awesome awesome season you guys have been absolutely ridiculous a lot of highlight films whether it be matthews double touch whether it be troby whether it be you know fergo whoever it may be i, I know i'm kind of just narrowing down to one team i'm being a little biased here but at the same time, um, whoever it is, man, you guys, week in, week out, always put on a heck of a show. And me and whoever my co-caster is just try to do our possible best to, uh, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, narrate through everything. But mm. that's going to do it here for us, Gex. I swear yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been this a great time league play. these couple of weeks. What was that? Been a great time over this last few weeks. I'm so excited to get into the next portion of the competition. Yeah, I am too. I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, now we know. All the dust has settled. We all know who is what and what is where. And this next portion is going to yeah. be so competitive. I'm so looking forward to it. Yeah, I cannot disagree. There's absolutely so much coming out. And we only got to look at one division. So now that we're just mashing them all in, we're going to get a much more interesting competition. You guys better be prepared for some really interesting stuff. Well, that's going to do it here for us. Um, before we take off, I think we do have one more thing. I think it's the tournament or overview video. If you guys are not familiar with what the format is, this mm. video should explain it to you. But my name has been Whoopshu. Gax has been here with me. Thank you very, very much for joining me in the booth, Gax. I appreciate you so very much. Any final thoughts, any final words before we uh, send this thing off into the distance? 
Um, obviously, big shout out to Max Formal, who uh, is the voice for the summary of this video, I believe. Uh, uh, put in some really good vocal work for this. Uh, but um, yeah, if you want to catch uh, what I'm doing, I'm busy all weekend with casts. So uh, at GexCasts on Twitter, if you want to check it out. Whoops. Uh, whoops a true apparently. Uh, <laughs> looking at the uh, name tag Bless there. You. It's uh, at Whoops you. It's at Whoops you gaming or he's at, at Whoops you spine. Yeah, there I'm pretty much the yeah. person who pops up when you type Whoops you in. Yep. So get on our Twitters if you wanna you wanna see more Rocket League because there's more than just the high school scene happening and everything is kind of heating up. Particularly going into the off season for RLCS shortly, there's gonna be so much more of this community stuff coming out of the woodworks. Yeah, well, thank you very much once again. Shout out to Liam, our producer. Shout out to Bass as well, um, our lovely uh, official in the lobby, setting things up and uh, making things all uh, appropriate for the players. I guess you can kind of say on the even playing field and stuff like that. So thank you guys very, very much for joining us. We appreciate you so very, very much. We will see you guys next time in the playoffs. Welcome to the Acer High School Cup. A multi-part tournament series staged as the premier Australian high school esports competition. Here, you'll find more to play for, not just more to play in. The tournament series takes part in five phases. The Mayhem Tournament, Divisional League Play, Divisional Finals, State Finals, and then finally, National Finals. The Mayhem Tournament is a single day tournament that includes every Australian high school team. The field will play in a Swiss format where competitors will filter towards others of similar skill level. In essence, winners will play the winners, losers will play losers. At the end of the day, we'll crown a Mayhem Champion. The Mayhem Tournament also gives us a good gauge of everyone's skill level, leading into the next stage, the Divisional League play. Here, we see all competitors split into skilled divisions tightening the competition and making matches as competitive and rewarding as possible. At the end of league play, each division will host a playoffs featuring the top teams crowning a champion within each division. And it doesn't stop there. With the results from all divisions, we'll find the best teams from each state and invite them to the state finals. Here, competitors will contend for the title of state champions who will then advance to our final phase, the national finals. After the dust settles, only our state champions will remain for one final contest, representing not only their state, but also their school in a battle to stake their claim as the national high school champions. Who will it be? For all we know, it could be you. To find out more, go to ael.org.au slash hs.
You have-